No. Uh, they don't. Uh, they it's doing it's because of the like new that. COPA changes. They required yeah. me to uh, state whether or not my channel was kid-friendly or not, and I chose no. And they're doing a couple weird things with other things. So gotcha. Hopefully we're streaming in the right place now. Hopefully. Are we green? Says we're green. What is this? A John episode? What is this? A John episode? Yeah. Psh, get out of here. Are we streaming? We might be streaming. There we are. Hey. <laughs> there it is. Hey, I see us. There we are. Finally. That's a crisp picture. Yeah. Thanks, YouTube, for uh, changing my stream key. Welcome to Talking Heads, episode 106, your once weekly live show for the latest in beer and tech news. I'm Jeff. I'm Rhett. Welcome to the show. Oh boy, it has been a week and I could use a beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How are you doing today, Rhett? I'm doing good. It has been a week, hasn't it? And, and it's funny, it's, it's been a short week because I got Monday off. So oh yeah. My, my, my company was closed on Monday, so... Yeah, so you. it's only been two days, and it's <laughs> it's already been like four, it feels like. Yeah, November's the month everything goes wrong anyways, because, yeah. you know, if you got Veterans Day, you definitely got more days off coming up, so. Uh, my wife and I actually, 16 years ago, took our very first date on Veterans Day. Oh, wow. So, yeah. It was, uh, hey, our, my place is closed on, on this day, because it was like we had... Had, had something going on Monday, and then everything was closed on Tuesday, and then something was, was going on Wednesday. And it's like, and she's dropping all the hints. She's going, you know, well, I haven't been bowling in a while. I hear the bowling alley's going to be on Tuesday. <laughs> hey, do you have any plans for Tuesday? And I'm like, no, I hadn't thought of anything. I wish I did, man. Yeah, I'm going to be really bored that day. Yeah, so I, I'm dense as they absolutely come. <laughs> and uh, she could not have been any more obvious. And, you know. Four years later, we were married and still together 16 years later. So. There you go. No, it wasn't even four. It was three years later we were married. Yeah. So. Well yeah, done, vet, Veterans Day is my, my official started dating my wife day. That's nice. Yeah. Inauguration Day, 2008 was mine. Yeah, there you go. Obama's Inauguration Day. <laughs> <laughs> January 20th. Nice. Well, at least we both have something to remember. Anyway, yeah, welcome to the go. show. As always, I <laughs> uh, hope you all are doing well tonight. Uh, uh, as always, if you haven't seen the show yet, I guess that's not as always. If you haven't seen the show before, thank you so much for joining us. We do try to keep this as family-friendly of a show as possible, both content and language. Uh, part of the reason we started a little late was YouTube's new COPA compliance thing. I had to submit that... Uh, I don't make content specifically for children, but it is still family friendly and da 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 and go through all the streaming stuff. And they changed my stream key through all of that. Uh, so anyway, got that sorted out. Uh, for those who haven't seen the show, we start out with about 20 minutes or so worth of beer news. Uh, anything in the, in the alcoholic beverage industry that's going on that kind of piques our interest. We then transition straight into tech news for the next hour to hour and a half. And then the end of the show is Q&A or pop culture, games, entertainment, things like that. Uh, and today there's some Disney Plus news. There's a couple other. Sonic the Hedgehog has a new look. Oh, yeah. uh, a, a new, new look. So we'll get into that kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, we do drink alcohol on the channel, although, again, we do keep it family friendly. If you are drinking something, please let us know in chat. And uh, through the first little bit, we will try to get uh, some shout outs out. Uh, it can be alcoholic, it can be non-alcoholic. Whatever your, your pleasure be, we will uh, give you a shout out. I like that we're talking about our, our relationships and how happy we are. And yeah. and then Shifty Wolf is like, make me happy. Just got served <laughs> with divorce papers today. Ooh, ooh. Sorry, bro. Ouch. Yeah, it was bad timing on our part, but yeah. it couldn't be helped. Yeah. Well, I I, I feel it, Shifty, and uh, <coughs> if I was one who poured one out for, for people, I, I would, I would pour one out for you, but tell you what, I'll drink one for you. How's that? <laughs> uh, anyway, tonight's uh, lineup, uh, what better way to commemorate the death of Widmer Brothers than to uh, have the, the classic Widmer Hef, or Hefa, as they call it. Uh, so just a... Good American style Hefeweizen. Uh, what is it? Five and a half percent, something like that. Four point nine. Uh, but Portland favorite uh, Winber Hefeweizen. Uh, we've also got the uh, Ninkasi Slayer seasonal release winter ale at seven point two, and the ever good uh, Ninkasi Prismatic Juicy IPA. Uh, dealer's choice. You feel like starting with anything in particular? I'm feeling either just going for the classic Hef. Or the Slayer. Let's go for the classic cast. Let's do it. 
Let's pour one out for the homies. That's right. <laughs> Into our mouths. There you go, sir. Arigato. Uh, Tropical Beach IPA from St. George and some apple cider. That's Reverend. Uh, Guinness Extra Stout from JKL Slayer. Uh, Fulton fre uh, Head Full of Fresh Hops. Uh, someone says, we got snow. Uh, Kildee is doing a Pyramid Hef. Another classic American style hef. Uh, I'm drinking Intel's Here's, ha ha ha. <laughs> uh, Three Floyd's Alpha King. I have not heard of that one. Some jerk says Widmer is the worst hef out there. Uh, that's Steve that I says Widmer. I know, I was trying to be funny. It didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, some jerk. Uh, Widmer's not the worst hef out there. In fact, it's probably the most classic American hef that's that's out there. Yeah. Um, to be I'm, honest, I'm not a big fan of European hefs. So. I like, uh, see. I love European hefs, but no, but no. I I still appreciate the uh, the the classic Widmer as well. So, cheers to you. Cheers to you all. Uh, Scott Filton, uh, party at the Moon Tower, double IPA from Latitude Forty Two. That sounds fun. Nice. Not cheers to you though, Steve. Just have a soda, you alkies. Okay. Okay. Like I said, you can drink whatever you feel like drinking. I feel like drinking this. I also have some water over here. Does that make me an alky? Yeah. I had a Gatorade before the show. Straight up. Vodka, and an old-fashioned. There you go. <laughs> so. All right. Uh, let's get right into it tonight. Uh, I, I kind of alluded to it, but the death of Widmer Hefeweizen and the death of Widmer in general yeah. is kind of on the horizon. Uh, as... Uh, InBev has completed their purchase of the CBA Craft Beer Alliance or Craft Brewers Alliance. Um, netted them a large number of breweries for a pretty hefty price tag. Uh, InBev in total paid about $16.50 per share for the CBA, uh, worth a total asking price of about $321 million. However, there's a little bit more to this story than that. Uh, back in August... Uh, InBev was in talks to buy the CBA and uh, they had to, or this was back middle of the year, like May, June or something like that. Uh, they were in talks to buy CBA and they entered negotiations and as part of the negotiations, uh, it, they said, if you do not, if we don't come to an agreement, InBev has to pay a $20 million fine to the CBA. Um, uh, and that has to be done by like August 10th or something like that. Uh, they didn't reach an agreement by then. So uh, InBev paid the $20 million fine. Uh, upon hearing that CBA was not going to be sold, the stocks absolutely tanked. The original asking price was $475 million. Oof. It sold today for $321. Wow. So a $20 million fine, just the cost of doing business to save $150 million. Jeez. Yeah. So, and, and that, it dropped that much in three months' time. That's crazy. Yep. Yeah, we're not going to buy it for, for what you want in August. So they couldn't come to an agreement. InBev paid $20 million. And today paid another 321 to buy them out. Uh, the breweries of note in the CBA were Hawaii's Kona Brewing Company, which also does uh, business here in Portland, has a Portland brewery. Uh, there's Oregon Widmer, uh, Widmer Brothers Brewing. Uh, Washington Red Hook Brewery. Florida's Wynood. Uh, Winewood Brewing Company, Massachusetts Cisco Brewers, North Carolina's Appalachian, Appalachian Mountain Brewery, and uh, gluten-free producer Omission Brewing Company, which uh, makes a selection of gluten-free beers. Some of them are okay, some of them are not. Yeah. Uh, there's Square Mile Cider Company and the PH Experiment, a brand incubator for CBA. Uh, those are the ones of note. Uh InBev bought CBA pretty much for Kona Brewing. Uh, that is the largest by far of the brewers uh, and really the only one to see growth at 11.3% growth year over year. Uh, and I guess by the end of 2020, they're expected to produce 500,000 barrels by themselves. Oh, wow. Uh, which is pretty flippin' impressive. Uh, meanwhile, Widmer, I guess, year over year is down almost 30%. Oh, wow. Um, and, uh, I guess that. Right. 
And the CBA actually stopped distributing Widmer uh, nationwide, except for a couple of kegs for, for Hefeweizen. Uh, so, I mean, just a couple of years ago, you could go into any airport, and if you order a, ordered a Hef, you'd get yeah, a Widmer Hef or a Pyramid Hef. Uh, it was one of the two. Um, but uh, the bottle shipments stopped. The can shipments stopped. Uh, and there's a lot of talk that, as part of this buyout, InBev may sell the Widmer Brothers Brewery here in Portland. Mm. Uh, to kind of lessen the blow of the $321 million. Yeah. Uh, so this may very well be the death of Widmer Brothers. Very well. It's kind of sad. I mean, it's not like they're an outstanding brewery, but at no. this point they're like an institution right. of Portland. You know? they're, they're an institution. They're they're a, a sponsor of the Portland Trailblazers and have been for like twenty years or something like that. Yeah. So anytime you go to the to go to a Blazer game, they're they're serving Woodmore Half at every single tap. Same at uh, Providence um, Park. Providence Park, or whatever they're, it's they're called a, now. I think yeah. it might have changed, but Timbers PG, Timbers PGE Park it was oh. for a while and. Yeah. I yeah. Don't know. Not, not, I think it's Providence Park now. I think you're right. At least it was a couple years ago, but yeah. But, Wherever the Timbers uh, play, In fact, uh, Timbers logo is on this can. This is the Timbers edition can. There you go. So Get axed. Yeah. Well, yeah. we'll see. Time will tell. Yeah. Um, kind of crazy to see all of these breweries getting bought up. Seems mm -hmm. like every week there's a new story about that. But. Yep. Yep. So kind of end of an era, although uh, the Hef was pretty much the best beer that Widmer's made in quite a while. They've got a couple IPAs that are all right. Yeah, I'm struggling to think of any of their other beers all of a sudden. Yeah. Uh, which is embarrassing. Yeah. Um, in fact, I looked at one of their IPA packs <laughs> today because I was considering picking one up. But uh, Widmer uh, Drop Top? Amber Ale? Is that one? Mm, yeah, with the dog logo. Yeah. Also, is it Widmer that makes the Octo? Which I think is like my favorite. Upheaval. Oh. Upheaval, oh, Omission Upheaval. IPA. Let's see. Open that window up. Hit that window. Yeah, maybe. I think Winmer does. Oh, look, uh, a people deadlift is the other deadlift. one, and uh, Russell Street. Yeah, I've had both of those. Yeah. Anyway, I think they make a good amber ale. I think that Widmer also does my favorite fall Oktoberfest beer. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never seen any of those. But... Uh, uh, Steelbridge Porter. It's an R. It's an all right Porter. So hmm. interesting. Sad to see them go, but I don't know that they're going to be terribly missed either. I mean, no, it's, it's a lot the, of jobs in the Portland area. That's yeah, the thing that kind yeah. of sucks. You know, and oh, the, Burr is one that they make. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, one good thing about about this is that uh, Portland seems to uh, never rest on its laurels for too long when it comes to breweries and stuff. So yep. who knows? It probably will make room in the market for the next the next best thing. So Absolutely we'll, we'll see what happens. Yep. Uh, so, <laughs> um, how do we transition into this one? Uh, North Bay Brewery releases, uh, we're going to try not to say the word. If we slip, I apologize. Uh, but, uh, North Bay Brewery releases F, P, G, and E beer. Uh, only they didn't say F. Uh, <laughs> so that is their new, uh, California style pale ale. Um, the reason bring is North Bay Brewer, uh, Brewery is a Santa Rosa, uh, local brewer, uh, which for those who don't know, was absolutely devastated last year, uh, by some Northern California fires, which were found to be at fault of PG&E. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, they basically created this beer, announced it on Twitter on Tuesday, and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday go by, and there's no backlash. There's there's nothing. It's just another beer release. And then all of a sudden on Saturday, the post apparently went wild or went viral. Uh, and uh, she's wild's a little close to home for this story. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it spread like wildfire. It spread like wildfire. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, on Saturday, the uh, brewery started getting bombarded with one star Yelp reviews, which is funny. Because, I mean, what does that sound like to you? Um, I mean, there's no way it's like P 
PG and E fans like running to the rescue of. It's actually kind of what it is. Is it? Yeah. Oh god. Um, to me, it so, reeks of like Bot Farm or something. You know? So some. Uh, no, it's exactly what it is. Oh. Uh, apparently, there was an outcry on Facebook and a couple other social oh. media venues um, of people upset at uh, at North Bay Brewery for disparaging the good employees who protected them from the from the fires. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We have nothing against the employees. We have nothing against them. We have everything against the company yeah. who caused these wildfires. Yeah. And you can work for a company and they can still do terrible things or, yeah. or make a terrible mistake, as the case were. I, they didn't maliciously start this fire, but it was at the fault of PG&E. It's kind of negligent. Right. It was a negligent and fire. Now, and now we're seeing... So, so, by the way, this is not just any ordinary fire. This is the 2018 Butte, uh, the, uh, the Camp Fire in Butte County, which killed 85 people and destroyed 19,000 buildings. Yeah. Watch any of the videos of YouTube of that thing and then tell right. me that you... <laughs> And tell me that you're against anybody that's against PG&E. Right. Uh, it, it's kind of like uh, uh, Steve Hofstetter does a joke, uh, F Air Canada. Uh, right, yeah, yeah. And, and, and so he does this whole thing, and he goes, I don't hate the people who work for Air Canada, but your employer sucks. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, and, and uh, to top it off, too, I mean, PG&E, I think they keep topping off their bad reputation with, like, I mean, I... I'm sure it's more. I'm not going to say this more, but they, like at least one person has died due to their like outage. Plan. Yeah, you know, they're, I, I yeah. think they're planned outages. But somebody died when their CPAP machine was turned off. I think mm -hmm. another person died. Like uh, maybe an elderly person died when their air conditioning was shut off. Like, yeah, I don't know. At least one definitely did with the CPAP machine or oxygen machine or something. And everybody's like, "Well, they should have had a spare." And it's like, "Well, he did." <laughs> Right, it still dies, and it still needs power. Yeah, my, right. that's my favorite. Like, that's some like next level victim blaming right there. Yeah, like, exactly. Which I usually try to steer clear of like talking about that at all. But like, they're just like, "Well, that old fart should have had his battery backup," and it's like he he did. Right. Well, he should have tried not being old and needing oxygen. Yeah. It's like okay. <laughs> exactly, and that's a terrible thing to laugh about. But I mean, honestly, yeah. what was he wearing? <laughs> right. So. Jeez, that was too dark. <laughs> uh, anyway, so PG&E was found at fault for the 2018 campfire in Butte County, which killed 85 people and destroyed 19,000 buildings. And the utility giant is currently prepared uh, to go to trial for its role in the 2017 Tubbs Fire, oh. uh, which tore through Santa Rosa County and Sonoma County the year before. Uh, and this is all according to sfgate.com. Uh, then just last week, the federal judge demanded PG&E answer questions related to a transmission line malfunction, which may be related to the recently contained Kincaid fire in Sonoma County in 2019. Pretty impressive. The roster of fires that they're generating. Right. Um, so, yeah, it, again, nothing against the employees and, and neither does, uh, does North Bay Brewing. Uh, but... FPG and E, yeah, you know that they're so not like exactly that. a beacon of truth in the community. Yeah, they're, they're more like the burning bush. Yeah. <laughs> Aha, that's pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> Solved. Um, but uh, yeah. Anyway, so FPG and E beer is getting uh, one star review bombs for uh, North Bay Brewing. I wonder if we can go and five star review bomb them. Mm -hmm. That'd be a cool thing of us to do. Tell you what. If get on to Yelp, give them a five star review. They deserve it. That'd be bomb. A lot of the outrage is uh, quote, my husband works for PG and E. They are the hardest working employees and the most generous. Wrote, wrote one commenter. My husband will be letting his crews know to pass on this S. Uh, show a uh, show of a bar and uh, due to your low class and ignorance. And <laughs> it's like again, that's your review. We're not upset at your husband. We're upset at uh, this company. What did your husband? What was your husband's role in this? All right, <laughs> let's start asking. Oh, well, I'd, I'd be upset at management. Look, totally. If your husband was like some grunt who, <laughs> like, sure, all he did was like throwing switches all day. Right. Uh, I uh, get it, but right. A lot of these people are saying they're linemen and, and things like that. Oh. And, and it's, oh, as a wife of a lineman, right. I see. I didn't read that. Right. And and it's like, I totally get you, but FPG and E. Yeah. 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 Oh well. Just killed yep. 85 people. Yeah. Nothing big. That's how many people died on the Battlestar Galactica when they had to vent the fires out in the miniseries episode at the beginning. Yeah. We cared about those people, it's too. true. 
Uh, yeah. I just watched that, so. <laughs> I was wondering why that was so fresh in your mind. <laughs> it's like, God, I haven't seen that in 20 years. It's been a while, yeah. Yeah, we're, uh, we're picking some new shows to go through. And, well, I went through Battlestar a long time ago, but yeah. anyway. Uh, the world now has a carbon negative, not even carbon neutral, carbon negative spirit. Uh, and that is a vodka, unsurprisingly. Uh, the way this came about was Airco is the, the maker of this vodka. Uh, require nothing but air, water, and they're making vodka. <laughs> that is ridiculous. It is ridiculous, and it sounds like pure science fiction. But basically what they're doing is they're taking the carbon dioxide out of air, and they're turning it into ethanol in solution, a 10% ethanol solution. And apparently the process is super, super efficient to, to get it to that point. Wow. They're then distilling that 10% ethanol to a 96.5% solution <laughs> on a custom 18 plate still, uh, uh, which does include some additional proprietary trade secrets that they, they, they do mention. Um, so they're distilling it up to 96.5% and then diluting it back down to a 40% ABV vodka. Air and water. Dude, this is like Star Wars I know. technology here. Yeah. This is like, this is the reason they've got moisture evaporators on Tatooine. Totally. <laughs> to make vodka. <laughs> totally. <laughs> but I, I love, I mean, scroll down to the next picture. Yeah, yeah. Because that it's, this looks like the coffee maker off Breaking Bad. Yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, they, and they say all that they, they need to run this is, uh, it runs on just solar a couple power. of watts and it's completely solar powered. And there's no grains, there's no harvesting, there's no machinery, there's no... This is amazing. Right. The unit can fit into any given bedroom. It's only faster and more efficient. I'm buying no. a new house. I think I need a uh, an air snuff sniffing distillation machine. Dude. Look, if they don't want to give up the trade secrets, that's fine. That's, they, should, they should sell units. That's fine. I'll totally steal in my house, though. Yeah, absolutely. If, if they're willing to, to hook me... I, I will do a review of that unit. That would be awesome. <laughs> um, and because air code distributes locally, the carbon dioxide emissions uh, of its distribution are minimized as well. So they're they're claiming that even their distribution of the alcohol is is carbon friendly. Dude, that's the best. That's the best way to do it. Rather than having like you you, you could have like worldwide uh, influence. Mm -hmm. You just you just set up the machines wherever you want to go. Then you right. don't even have to ship. You're already there. Good to go. This is. Oh. This is amazing. Yeah. And I guess they are one of uh, five finalists uh, for a $20 million global prize uh, featured by XPRIZE to convert CO2 emissions into val into a valuable product. So they may be on the... This on the it. Totally gets my vote. You want to talk about valuable products. I mean, right. Like, what... <clears throat> I mean, in the future, when we're all just traveling through the wasteland, uh, the things that are going to have the most valuable... Uh, most value to us? Bullets... And vodka. I mean, I mean, bullets, bottle caps, whatever that machine is that turned uh, Kevin Costner's pee into drinkable water in Waterworld, <laughs> and this vodka machine. Yeah, yeah. I get that. I can live an eternity. Good to go. Good to go. <laughs> That's amazing. That's awesome. That is. It's cool. Tech. It's good very tech. cool. Yay, science! No, it's yeah, science, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Golden opportunity there. Uh, yeah, this is Star Trek Tech. Uh, launch one up to the ISS. Yeah. Totally. I think uh, I think we need to observe the effects of inebriation on zero gravity inhabitants. Yeah. Haven't they done an experiment on that? I don't know if they have or not. I feel like they have like a couple of unofficial experiments. There's a couple of uh, unofficial, uh, we'll just say off the books experiments yeah. that have, may or may not have happened in zero gravity environments. <laughs> little un unscheduled docking shall we yeah, say there you go yeah donald uh kane asks i bet they work better in areas with high co2 levels just imagine like putting one of those in like mexico city i wonder like what sort of products you'd get with all that like... do you get different flavors of vodka depend on the local co2 content that would be interesting it worth finding out would one in montreal be different than los angeles would one in new york be different than portland Probably, right? Yeah. It's gotta be. Makes... I mean, I guess, though, if you're distilling it and distilling it, mm -hmm. like, maybe not, but yeah. still. So. Uh, someone says the Russians have. <laughs> <laughs> of course they've drinking vodka in space. Probably. 
Drink? Drinking. Drink. Drunk. Drunk. No. <laughs> they, they, have, they have drunk? They've... They, they have drunk. They have drunk. They have drunk. They have been drunk. Yes. In space. Yes, there we go. No doubt. And last but not least, uh, Jägermeister is entering the interesting uh, alcohol realm with a cold brew coffee liqueur, uh, which I am actually kind of excited for. I, I love me some... Uh, some Kahlua or just a, a coffee liqueur in general. And uh, another one on the market? Yeah. I'll definitely try it. From Jägermeister, no less. Yep. I'm down. Looks kind of tasty. Uh, in the chat, uh, Reverend has left a Yelp posting for a Shady Oak Barrel House uh, in Santa Rosa, California. Is that the one? So that's the one. So uh, go, uh, go give them a, a couple of likes if you would. Five star reviews. Tell them Craft Computing sent you. <laughs> Tell them FPG and E. Yeah, we we heard great reviews from uh from uh, Craft Computing. Say I know somebody whose husband is a lineman there, and I hate him. <laughs> 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 Don't say that. But if you did, I would laugh. Yes. Just remember, I told you not to say it though. Yeah. <laughs> what you do from here on out, I can't control. So anyway, yeah, Jägermeister coming out with a cold brew coffee liqueur, thirty three percent, and uh, a. Approximately 10% caffeine. Uh, so it should, uh, con- the average shot could, should contain about as much as an average cup of coffee. So that's kind of the, the call to uniqueness there. That's too much. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. That's, I mean, I guess you're not just chugging it, so. Right. Um,. And someone says, wow, beer news went a little bit long today. Yeah, a little bit, but, you know, bear with me. Oh, it says it'll contain 10% of the caffeine in an average cup. Oh, 10% so of bit, the caffeine. That's a little bit more doable. Gotcha. 10% of the caffeine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Which is still, that's that's actually That sounds reasonable. way more reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. Way God, more I was reasonable. just thinking of, like, the super crazy stuff. That's, like, Four loco level if you're getting, a, like, a whole cup of coffee and a shot, you know? Yeah. People dying from their freaking hearts stopping. Yeah, no kidding. Mm. My mouth is watering thinking about this, though. <laughs> uh, apparently, Yelp posting is temporarily blocked on that page. Uh, apparently, oh, they bummer. they were killing the review bans. So, uh, if you remember, go back and give them a positive. So, <laughs> and Becky Poo says, "New Jaeger squeal." <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Becky. Yep. And what did Skull post ten minutes ago? Hold on. Uh, I miss nothing. Yeah, apparently, nice Skull posted something. I didn't give him any love, so apologies. Apologies, Skull. Anyway, let's get into some tech news. Boy, boy, boy. At 28 minutes in. 28 minutes in, yeah. and boy, howdy, yeah. have we got the news for you? Uh, John, post the untapped link to uh, to to the chat because I'd love to review bomb the uh, the untapped link as well. <laughs> and and review bomb in the positive. Give them a, give them a five star. It's okay. It's not bad. Not bad. No, it's solid. Yeah. If you're expecting something mind blowing, you picked the wrong beer. Right. The reason this is on tap everywhere you go is because it's as reliable as Coors. That's exactly right. Coors, Sam Adams, Budweiser. Yeah. It's you know what you're getting when the when the tap is pulled. Right. See, nobody goes to McDonald's because, oh my God, the cuisine is amazing. It's like, no, it's going to be the same 90 times out of 100. <clears throat> uh, apparently, Skull posted the untapped link. There it there is. is. I got it. And I think I can post that because I'm allowed to. Boop. There we go. Ah, Skull got it first. Uh, Hops, I don't know why you're being blocked from posting links because all of your chat should be allowed. You're in the always allow list. But, oh well. Sorry, bro. We'll figure it out. Uh, we got it. All right, moving on to some tech news at the 29-minute mark. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alienware. Uh, they used to make some of the most upgradable laptops due to the XMM... Uh, MXM form factor of their graphics cards. Uh, and MXM is not completely unknown to people, but uh, 
not a lot of people use the the graphics card standard. It's basically a PCI Express card that you can put into your into your laptop. Um, but uh, Alienware has released a RTX twenty seventy a twenty eighty upgrade kit for their Area fifty one M laptops, uh, and it looks a little something like this. So you get a brand new cooling solution uh, to go on top of your i7 or i5 processor, whatever you happen to go with, uh, as well as the all new MXM graphics card. Uh, now, a reminder, these graphics cards are essentially the full in desktop part, maybe with a little bit more strict power limit. Uh, so you are getting the same number of CUDA cores, the same number of RAM, the same bandwidth, same speed, same, same tensor core, same RT cores. Uh, but in a nice uh, laptop installable form factor. Uh, the RTX 2070 upgrade, hold on to your butts, is going to cost you a cool $1,038.99, whereas the, GTA, or the RTX 2080 is officially priced at $1,638.99. Although it is currently available for eleven thirty-eight, uh, so if you have an area an area fifty-one M Alienware laptop, and you desperately need an RTX card, <laughs> you could totally go this route. You could totally do it. I don't know why it's a thousand dollars for a card that's this big, with only like a six-phase VRM, and you know it's not that different from a desktop part so why is it twice as expensive i don't know <laughs> but the option is there if you want it aimed at people with more money than brains that's right uh this story was rather interesting um it's a little bit of a lawsuit story so if you're not high on lawsuit stories i apologize but this one has a couple interesting twists and turns to it uh, so Apple is suing a company, shockingly, uh, called Corellium. Uh, Corellium is a company that basically created a from the ground up iOS emulator. Now you might be saying, well, of course Apple is suing them. They created an emulator and it wasn't sanctioned. Sure. Hold the phone. Corellium was a fully sanctioned iOS development application and environment for testing iOS applications for security uh, leaks. Uh, Apple had actually signed off on the use of Corellium and was recommending developers download the software to test their applications. Apple was in talks earlier this year to purchase Corellium. Corellium declined. Apple is now suing them for copyright infringement. Um, wow. <laughs> I feel like there's some dangerous precedent to be set in here. Yes, there is. Um, Why is it always... It just always makes them seem so monstrous. Right. Not just Apple. All the big companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it is certainly not a good look for Apple. Uh, it's certainly going to hold some precedent in some future cases and, and future fair use as well. Um, so the quote from TechCrunch says, Corellium allows customers to create and interact with virtual iOS devices, a software iPhone, for example, running on actual iOS firmware, all from within the browser. Apple says this is copyright infringement and is demanding Corellium stop, quote, all uses of, end quote, its iOS virtualization products and pay Apple unspecified damages and lost profits. Corellium could allow, for example, a security researcher to quickly fire up a simulated iPhone and hunt for potential bugs. Um... And this is not that uncommon of a process. Yeah. Uh, I use virtualization for testing all the time, uh, for machine interaction, for group policy uh, injection, making sure that the proper settings are actually applied to make sure everything works, uh, firing up a VM in a, in a development environment to make sure that it's not going to compromise any of my existing servers and make sure the application that I'm installing is running as intended. Uh, we can also test, uh, you know, it, in and out ports on, on various applications, make sure they're not sending weird packets to North Korea or some crap like that. Um, and uh, yeah, so virtualization for security enhancement and security testing is 
something that's pretty much done industry-wide. And as I said, Apple was recommending Corellium for a short time. Yeah. <laughs> Donald Kane brings up an interesting point that they mm-hmm. got to get the price of the stock down before they move in to buy them out. Ah, oh, pulling one out of InBev's playbook, I see. <laughs> That is exactly what uh, what Budweiser did. No, nah, we'll wait another couple months. Save us 150 mil. Oh, well, not a bad plan, I guess. If... And yeah, if they sue Corellium into oblivion, then uh, then yeah, they can just go, well, they can't pay us back, so we'll just take over the company. Yeah, we'll see. But, uh... Doesn't feel like it's a good look for them. Yep. But, uh... Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I was just thumbing through the Forbes article. Uh, Forbes wrote it up as uh, the super stealth startup has built an Apple hacker's paradise, uh, saying that the virtualized use of iPhones could uh, allow hackers to test uh, kernel exploits, kernel debugging, uh, inject SciScript, and uh, all run on a virtual iOS. Um, And someone said, quote, in, or quote, this is basically magic. Um, So... Yeah, it will be interesting to see the outcome of this case and if any news is made of the fact that Apple didn't care that they were running virtualized iOS instances for development testing uh, because that might constitute a fair use or even a recommendation of the product. Yeah. Um, So there's going to be some ins and outs of this case and this is not the last we've heard of it, Um, although this just dropped about a day ago. uh, So this is still very much developing. Time will tell. Yep. Let's see. What's next? Ooh, yes. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, the new Mac Pro finally has a release date. It will be coming in December. And I don't remember the actual date because my page won't load. Just says in December. Yeah. Okay, that's right. Anyway, yep. all new Mac Pro Tower and the new screen available in December at a, an Apple retailer near you. Uh, the base model is going to be priced at $5,999 and gets you an 8-core Intel Xeon W on the 3476. Pla- I always forget what the so- that socket name is. 3476 platform, uh, base clock of, or sorry, Boost clock of up to 4 gigahertz, 32 gigs of memory, and an AMD Radeon RX 580. Oh, sorry, it's the RX 580X because it's pro. Uh, and upgrades include up to a 28 core uh, Xeon 1.5 terabytes of DDR4 ECC and dual AMD Vega Pro Vega 2 graphics cards, uh, which have two Vega duos on board. Uh, for a total of uh, four GPUs with what is it, 512 gigabytes of total video memory. <laughs> yeah, it's it's insane. It's pro. It's pro. Uh, well, the video cards totally are. The CPUs. <laughs> Tell me how expensive Threadripper was again. <laughs> oh right, it it's not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's Apple for you. Uh, In addition, there's also the Apple Display making its debut with its famously uh, $5,000 price and the $1,000 stand, which is nothing more than a piece of cut aluminum. So, (laughs) literally all it is. It's aluminum and a couple of screws. I could have made one. Jeff hiccups are early this week. Yeah, Jeff's, Jeff's actually not feeling all that well today, so. It's one of those days, man. It's one of those days. Feel like it's dark out, you know, everybody's getting tired early. Yeah. When you drive an hour to and from work every single day, it takes its toll. And when you're 10 days away from closing on your brand new house, which will turn your hour commute into about 18 minutes, that hour commute really aggravates you. (laughs) That adds up. Yeah, so... Yeah, I can't wait. I'm going to be home about an hour and 40 minutes earlier every single day. That's awesome, man. 
I've I'm, been I've been doing a lot of work up in uh, like northeast mm -hmm. uh, Portland. Yeah, up in Gresham. Oh yeah, Troutdale. And I've done those drives. Oh my god, dude! The <laughs> other day, so there was like one day where I got a, I had to have passed like five wrecks in one day, all of which slowed traffic down. Uh, yeah. So from my house to work, all the way back to my house, door to door. I worked about a 13 hour day. Yeah. Five of that was on the road. Yep. I've just, I have done Portland. that too. I have Dude. totally done that. And then one day I was trying to get onto I five northbound down there in, uh, in, uh, or on the North Portland or God, what am I saying? The North Salem, um, yeah. on ramp. Yeah. And, uh, dude, somebody had crashed all the way up by the Brooks on ramp yeah. and it had backed up onto the parkway in Salem. Yep. yep. <laughs> It's like, yep. What the heck? Not surprised. Not surprised. I just can't believe it. I also yep. saw first responders wrapping up a dead dude on the side of the the highway that day. That's so that always, was a that was a thing. That's always an experience. One day, uh, the next morning, <clears throat> I was first to get stopped by the fire trucks for a car that had flipped over, which sucked. Made me mm -hmm. about forty five minutes late, but. I got to see them like jaws of life, a dude out of the car, mm -hmm. go crazy, man. It was nuts. Anyway, 18 yeah. minute commute, you shouldn't have to deal with any of that. I shouldn't. <laughs> and in fact, I'm turning off before any of the traffic could ever possibly start. And even if the traffic does build up at the turnoff that I have to take, I can actually take uh, one of three exits further up the road yeah. and just take back roads up yeah. to my new house. Not only that, I am you, so av excited. you avoid the bridge. Yeah. You're good, man. Yeah. You're golden. Yeah. So I am so excited. Anyway, so excited. Let that let just carry that feeling with you for the rest of the, yeah. the rest of your time here. Yeah. So anyway, uh, it's been pretty well documented. The new internals of the Mac Pro are not necessarily the best value for the money. Never is. Never is. You're paying for the name. Yeah, you're paying for the name. You're paying for the aesthetic. The aesthetic, and you're paying for Mac OS. Uh, which, to be fair, if you're a macOS fan and you like the way it works, then that works for you. And in fact, it worked for me for quite some time as well because I paid extra to get Macs for quite a long time. Uh, they just started screwing me over, starting with the iPhone and moving on to some of the professional products, and I dropped them. Like anyway, a bad habit. Like a bad habit, exactly. Now he hates them. Right. I don't hate them. <laughs> I, don't, I don't hate Apple. I, I, uh, Apple I, hates you. <laughs> Apple does hate me. Um, I have said this before. I don't hate Apple. I expect better of it. Yeah. And and well, you've been in the game this long. And that, and that's what's frustrating is Apple. You can be better. Yeah. You're just not. Yeah. You're choosing this road, and it's profitable. And I don't blame you. What's interesting is I would have swore like the all. I guess I don't know any of the spec differences in in the iPhone 11. Mm -hmm. But from an outsider's perspective, you know, just seeing the commercials and stuff on TV, I'm like, wow, they're going all in on the cameras. That's going to crash and burn. Considering, like, what the <laughs> flop was for the iPhone X. Yeah. Like, dude, I was, like, setting up iPhone X displays, and they had lines out the door. And every single story I set up, they were like, oh, we don't have it in. Yeah. I was like, why don't you tell those people? And they're like, well, they got here last night, and we didn't have the heart to tell them. It's like, yeah. they're going to find out you don't have any phones? Yep. <laughs> But anyway, the iPhone 11, it's like, I kept being like, well, this is going to crash and burn. But people seem to really like it for some reason. Uh, please do a tech setup of the new house. Oh, moving vlogs are coming. Absolutely. Don't don't worry about that. Um, but uh, yeah, actually, my wife, uh, she has an iPhone 6S or had an iPhone 6S. And she's looking at the new iPhones going, they're exactly the same. I, and they're I, just more expensive. And they're just more expensive. So her and I both bought Google Pixel 3As uh, about two weeks ago. How do you like it? Uh, I really enjoy it. Uh, I, I haven't found really any quirks that, it, that are like deal breakers with it. Yeah. The camera is fantastic coming from the uh, uh, the Essential phone. Yeah. That was my one complaint of the Essential PH1 was the camera was just horrible. It yeah. was not up to the standards of what the rest of the phone should have been. Yeah. The pixels um, are kind of baller. All right, so yeah, Pixel 3a, loving it so far. Yeah. It's, it's been pretty solid. I got to upgrade soon. I'm on the Pixel 2, yeah. but uh, it's not bad. But anyway, uh, so again, the, the new Mac Pro, not necessarily the best bang for the buck. In fact, one of the worst, because you can get pretty much the same performance of that octa-core uh, Intel Xeon W processor out of like, oh, I don't know, a Ryzen 3700X for 330 bucks. Yep. And the RX 580 for 199. Oh wait, no, that's the RX 580X, which is 599. 
Uh, uh, anyway, uh, so definitely not the the system I would currently recommend you go out and buy. No. However, what if I said you could build your own Mac Pro? I, w I would be intrigued by that. Yeah. Tell me more. Well, <laughs> as it turns out, uh, I've been meaning to cover this for a couple of weeks, uh, but Dune Case, you can do exactly that. They've actually recreated the looks and aesthetics of the brand new Mac Pro, and in fact, the old Mac Pro as well, with the old cheese grater look. Uh, and it's currently on Indiegogo with a couple days left to, uh, to back it. Um, when I first saw this case, I was immediately excited for it. One of my favorite aesthetics <coughs> of all time is that 2006 to, to 2012 yeah. Mac Pro cheese grater tower. I was, I was gonna say cheese grater to make fun of you. No, it, it's called the cheese grater Mac. <laughs> it, it totally is. Dang it all. Yeah. Uh, but it's one of my favorite aesthetics, and it's one of the more efficient designs that's ever been done because it's just a giant mesh grill, but it looks so dang good. Yeah, it does. Um, the new Mac Pro has a little bit of a different grill design um, where it's got these large circles with, like, these inner cubes with circles that are cut out behind them. So it's... Uh, the, what they're calling it is the dice pattern. Uh, so it's basically... Uh, squares on the inside and, and circles for all the holes. Um, and it's a really interesting design. Um, anyway, you can actually pick up a Dune case for $199. Nice. Um, and if you want the new dice uh, grill for it, you can pick one up for $279. Perfect. And quite honestly, pretty darn good price if you're uh, if you're wanting to emulate a Mac Pro. Yeah. Um, I guess Linus actually already reviewed this case and gave it pretty glowing reviews for build quality, which was the one thing I was majorly concerned with yeah. was it looks good but a hallmark of apple is how good is it actually yeah because the apple towers are built like tanks they are you can take it down to the bare parts and the aluminum is thick and rigid and every single component in there has the satisfying when it goes into place and uh, and if you've ever built a PC tower in like a cheap tower, you know what I'm talking about, where you're cutting your hands on the sheet metal and everything else. And apples are not like that. They're they're quarter inch aluminum or they're they're five mil aluminum and just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Um like I said, one of my favorite towers of all time. And uh, and it seems Dune Case has done a a remarkable job emulating that build quality. Uh, where I guess he took it apart and even with the frame completely disassembled top panel uh, both sides off he goes this thing is still remarkably sturdy nice um, so well the one problem is it is it is a Kickstarter campaign it is an oh, Indiegogo, Indiegogo campaign uh, they are two days away from their goal but uh, they've already amassed uh, almost 700% of their original goal yeah um, uh, they have sold, it looks like, 1,003 of their standard edition cases with the dice grill. Uh, they've sold 54 of their uh, their standard edition just cheese grater max. Um, they've done a, one of the buy the dice grill in bulk in a, in a 10 pack. And, uh, oh, they they sold out of their early bird 100 uh, of the, the early cheese grater max. So, Interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. My one issue with crowdfunding things mm -hmm. is that uh, my success rate for getting a product at the end of it is less than 50%. Right. I think I'm three out of seven, three out of eight, yeah, somewhere right I'm in there. Yeah, I think I'm three out of seven as well. There was one that shocked the heck out of me. I, I, I uh, kickstarted a game. Gosh, this was back in like 2011. And I think I got a game key in like 2015 for it. Just out of the blue. And it was an early access game key, and I don't know that anything actually ever came of it. But at least I could finally download it and play it. Yeah, I kickstarted um, Pillars of Eternity. Okay. That turned go. into a good investment. Yeah. yeah. Um, and kickstarted some board games, which I ended up getting. Those mm -hmm. are the only ones that worked. Yeah. I've ki I kickstarted this a uh, couple other products that uh, sometimes I check back in. To, to see and I, I feel bad because it's like what must the people running those companies like I'm amazed that they even let the conversation about whether or not their customers are getting their products mm -hmm. I'm amazed they let those conversations continue to go on right like I would have just like gone into hiding yeah 
and never answered any email or chat or anything again. Yeah. Because it's been like the longest one. It's been like seven years now. I've been waiting. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's there's actually a Portland uh, Kickstarter that is one of the more infamous ones. The Cooler Cooler. The Cooler Cooler. Do you remember cooler. that? I remember something. About, yeah. 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 Yeah, that that's one of the more infamous never delivered uh, to all of their backers. Yeah, and then there's projects. other ones that just get like destroyed early on. Like the person who kickstarted the like fidget cube, mm -hmm. they kickstarted the fidget cube, and then Chinese manufacturers just swooped in and made mm -hmm. cheaper fidget cubes mm -hmm. and flooded the market with Chinese knockoffs. Yep, and like so, fidget cube was selling their cubes for. You know, quite a bit of 15 money. Fifteen bucks, and all of a sudden, here's these ones on Amazon for three ninety nine. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Two day delivery, man. You know, yep. you can't beat that. Why? Yeah. So, kind of feel bad for people like that who actually have like a good product that just gets you know destroyed by. Yep. But um, yeah, sent you. Looking at you, my man. Yep. I'm waiting for my my products. So, um, I hope this goes very well for them. I hope they're able to deliver the product. From from all accounts that I've heard, I'm they sure they, will. they are ready to deliver the product. Um, it, it looks like a very solid case. Um, it looks like they have a lot of su like support. Publicly, yes, so. I would certainly love to get my hands on one. <coughs> um, and uh, yeah, uh, should be uh, should be worth a look. They do have a couple days left in the campaign if you want to get four in days. on this. Four days left. So if you are interested in jumping on and getting yourself a Dune Case Pro uh, for one ninety nine, yeah, good to go. Yep, yep. Hey, somebody in the chat asked who the hockey team was we root for in Portland, and someone mentioned our AAA team. I just got to say, we don't have a pro. We don't have a pro. We have the Portland Winterhawks. Yeah. And they're, they're what, a two-time champion in the last five years? Are they? Something That's like pretty that. impressive. Yeah. yeah, the Winterhawks are like a AAA team that kind of, uh, I don't know the sports words for it, unfortunately, but anyway, they kind of feed into right. uh, the Chicago... Blackhawks. Yes, I was. I was trying to remember what their their major league affiliation was. Yeah. So I um. So if you're talking about teams we root for in Portland, of course the Winterhawks are always go to great entertainment, but they're not in the NHL. No. Um. So if you want to root geographically close, I always root for the Canucks. Sometimes I go for the Kings because the Kings are in my Twitter feed all the time. Mm -hmm. But also our team feeds into the Blackhawks, so I also root for the Blackhawks. So there you go. The Vancouver Canucks. Canucks, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just making sure we were on the same page yeah. that you weren't going like, like another yeah. region. Yeah. Like for I was like, is that Quebec is that Vancouver? Something? I don't remember. <laughs> no. I know Vancouver has a team. Who was that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's not like the um, Oilers or something. Honestly, as as much as I hate to do it, uh, because they're an LA affiliate, uh, I always go uh uh Anaheim Mighty Ducks. There you go. Yeah. yeah. That, that that's the one I, I usually lean towards. Yeah. If I've got a root for someone. That's fun. Yeah, yeah, hockey's an interesting quack sport. Quack attack is back. Yeah, quack baby, quack, quack, um, quack, quack. Yes. Hockey's an interesting sport. So thanks for bringing that one up, yep. medic, medic B. I think brought it up in the chat. Yep. Um, All right. I um, I think I missed a page on your on your slides. Because uh, we have it. we have the EFF. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, we may. Yeah, this is um, good. So if you go down to Chrome, you okay. should be able to rather not. copy the link. Scroll up. Uh, right there. Yeah, copy that. Boop. And then just throw it in a new tab. There we go. That just make a click sound. <laughs> awesome. Uh, anyway, uh, so a federal court today, uh, and this or yesterday, excuse me, yesterday. I want to be correct about this. Uh, federal court ruled that suspicionless searches of travelers' phones and laptops by border patrol is now unconstitutional. Boom. This is uh, fairly big news uh, for for international travelers. Yeah. In and out of the U.S. Um, and this has actually been kind of a hot button as of late. Um, so there's, there's been a lot of talk over the last couple of years because these searches have ramped up after it was deemed legal by, by border patrol, um, that, uh, if you were coming into the country or leaving the country, they could request your phone, 
they could force you to unlock it. They could request your laptop. They could force you to enter your password. They could then take a complete copy of your device to analyze later, uh, which just screams so much problems with security, with data security, with data integrity for someone who's like a doctor or you know, a business firm who they're taking you know, intellectual property out of the country to, to, to do business overseas or something like that. Um, there is so much wrong with the inherent, I have access to all of your data, regardless of any suspicions that I have. Um, and, uh, and I'm glad that this, that, that the little guys won yeah. in, in this case. Uh, you know, I, I'm not big, bad anti-government, but I'm also mm. very much against authoritative governments and I mean this is like flies directly in the face of the fourth amendment of the yes. constitution yeah. and the fact that like Unlawful people are e even willing to entertain the fact that like border security is a reason to forsake your own privacy right to, it, to, it's to, a to, joke. to forfeit your constitutional rights and in, in the sake of you know yeah and then people let's say let's let's say because you know we're in the Portland area people are like well you're in the Portland area that doesn't actually apply to you and the, 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 Actually, Border Patrol has jurisdiction anywhere within 60 miles of the U.S. border. You know where Portland is? It's within 60 miles of the U.S. border on the West Coast. Coastline! So, they have unlimited latitude before this ruling. Pretty much every, uh, like, 85% of Oregon, of Oregonians, live within 60 miles of the U.S. border. <laughs> because we all live within 60 miles of the coastline. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's a joke. And uh, the fact that it even had to uh, go as far as it did mm -hmm. is a joke. Yes. Um, you think that any citizen should just be able to say, hmm. oh, and somebody says it's 100 miles, by the way. So Yeah, 100 miles. Even, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, 90% of Oregon. <laughs> Once you go further east than that, <laughs> yeah, you, you got the whole rest of the you state got to some make Billy that up. goats out there. Yeah. You got some... Uh, but, uh, and that's bonkers. And then imagine all of the people before this ruling who said, uh, no, I'm sorry, you're violating the Fourth Amendment. And yes, the Fourth Amendment applies to everybody on, for on, on American soil, even mm -hmm. foreign citizens. Correct. The Constitution protects everybody equally. Ha ha ha. Weird, I know. Uh, sorry, that just really riled me up. I know you didn't mean <laughs> it, Che Che, but... <laughs> um, is it the coastline or when international waters start? It is the coastline. Because that is technically the border. Yeah. Now, the U.S. has jurisdiction out to, what is it, 20 miles offshore. Something like that. Uh, but the coastline is technically the border. So everything 100 miles in from the from where water meets land is where the, the Border Patrol has jurisdiction. Yeah. And 20 miles past it. Yeah. Yeah, here's the thing. If you and I are obligated to mind and obey uh, the Constitution, especially the Fourth Amendment, which mm -hmm. comes into play a lot in my life... Uh, <laughs> then law enforcement has to as well. Yeah. And the moment that you just start thinking like, eh, you know what? It doesn't apply to me. Right. I'm not within 100 miles of the border. Then you just, you're just part of the, you're part or, of the problem. Or, or you know what? You go, yeah, here's my cell phone. I've got nothing to hide. Yeah. Well, neither do I. That doesn't mean I want Border Patrol to have a full copy of my cell phone and everything that I've ever done and implicate me in some illegal doing based, based on their findings. Or even that, just like, I, I mean, what are they going to do with that data when it's done? I doubt they're going to destroy it properly. You hang, know hang up all my dick pics or something? <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys, now we're going to rate them. <laughs> Based on a scale of 1 to 10, it's like, God. But the problem is, is I wouldn't even put it past Border Patrol to do something like that. Right. You know, you look at you look at how the TSA handles personal data, uh, and granted, I know the TSA isn't Border Patrol, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say I doubt that they're as technologically savvy. I mean, look, my personal biases are showing through here, but <laughs> but uh, I recall several stories where somebody had their life's work on a freaking uh, you, you know USB one drive, of, USB drive, yeah. one of those like encrypted USB drives, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, like the Kingston one of the Iron on, Keys, yeah, the Iron yeah. Keys, exactly. They had their life's work on this thing, and of course, they're not going to check that when they're getting on a flight. They have it on their pocket, or they have it in their on their uh, carry-on bag, or whatever. Mm -hmm. TSA could not, for the life of them, figure out that it was a freaking flash drive, you yeah. know. 
um, because it's in one of these stainless steel tubes and all of these things. Yeah. And and um, and ultimately it got taken away from this person while they went through the scan and all this sort of stuff. And he just naturally assumed it made its way back into his bag and all this stuff. And he got onto the plane and realized mm-hmm. he never got that back. Yep. He stopped the flight to get off, paid a fine mm-hmm. to get off the plane to go back and get his thumb drive Mm -hmm. and it turned out tsa had just thrown it away yep (laughs) like okay i get it it's an encrypted drive so yeah i guess there's the extra layer of security yeah (laughs) but you're just putting it into a trash bin by a table right that then just goes wherever and then anybody has access to that was probably wasn't your trash bin it was probably the same place they dump all the water and dangerous explosives (laughs) that you can't take past the the checkpoint (laughs) oh god God. Anyway, yeah. so got to finish my beer. Oh no, you didn't finish the beer. We'll just pour it in here with all the rest of the liquid plutonium we confiscated <laughs> earlier. <laughs> yeah, mind the splash radiation there. Uh, right. We're gonna. These are where we keep all the bombs. Careful, you're in the splash zone. <laughs> splash zone. Anyway, that's uh, what I think about this rule. I love traveling. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Anyway, um, people who bash the A- the ACLU, this is what the ACL does. ACLU does for you. They protect your rights. Yes. Uh, and this is a win. By yes. Them, so. This is absolutely a win for them. Cool. Anyway. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. yeah. Slayer. 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 Finish. It's, a, it's popped up. Don't hurt yourself. I swear I can handle this. There's a little bit of a trick to it. Ah! It's not being a freaking wussy. Yeah. <laughs> ah! Got it! <laughs> Man, I knew I should have skipped the gym this week. <laughs> if I knew I would be on camera. Well, I did know. I skipped it regardless. No. There was a case with an immigration lawyer. I think they confiscated his laptop because he didn't unlock it for them. Yep. What a joke. Yep. Hey, if you guys want to donate to the ACLU, every dollar of my old band's album sales on Bandcamp is directly donated to the ACLU. There you go. So you don't have to do that if you don't want, but we're called The Monster Addict Heavy Metal Album. It's an old album, but uh, but we, do, we, don't, we don't keep any of the money we get off Bandcamp. So. Nice. Very cool. Mm. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Of course. Happy holidays. Cheers to you all. <laughs> We're drinking the holiday beer. Mm. That is good. Oh. Love me some winter ale. Uh, I, I love winter ale season. Uh, I actually went out and bought a 12 pack of the uh, 10 barrel uh, Pray for Snow. Yeah. Because it's one of my favorites every year. Red needs to sleep on the couch if he can't. If he's so drunk, he already can't open a bottle. He wasn't drunk. This is just a weird bottle opener. It was a hard Sh- one. Show him this. Use, yeah. Um, this is a bottle opener that gets you zero leverage. It's a bottle cap <laughs> that has a bottle opener in the dead center of it. So basically, you have to hold it and like leverage up. Yeah. Like that. It's it's a little tricky. Yeah. It was my first time using it. It's easier than using your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But. Yeah. At first, too, I thought it was one of those just, like, pop ones. Yeah. You see those where you, like, put it over and you're like... Psh. Yeah, I've seen those. Yeah, yeah. Is this thing on? <laughs> Link to the band. Um, I think it's just monsteraddictedbandcamp.com. I- I'm not going to link to it. Let me make sure that's it, though. Uh, we can get into this. What's your favorite Pacific Northwest brewer? Rainier? <laughs> <laughs> You got me. <laughs> um, boy, it's a long list. Um, I, I, I would be hard pressed to pick one. Um, one of my favorites is probably. Oh, who's the one down in Eugene? The uh, Ninkasi. <laughs> no, oh, not, Hop Valley. No, not Hop Valley. Oh, Hop Valley's really good. Um, God, they make a freaking awesome coffee beer. Anyway, the link is monsteraddict.bandcamp.com. Oakshire. Oakshire. Oakshire is probably in my top couple. Oh, Oakshire is really good. For me, yeah. it's um, it's got to be uh, 
Breakside is up there. Breakside's up there. I don't know why I'm opening up Discord. Oh, what? Hey, dude, this closed on my... Okay. Oh, that's how that works. Yeah, bre Breakside's hard to beat. Um... <laughs> don't say Gilgamesh. Don't say Gilgamesh. <laughs> it's Gilgamesh. <laughs> don't worry, it's not Gilgamesh. You know, though, speaking of Salem Brewers, though, I do admire Sani Am. I think that they put on Sani Am some does, great beers. does some phenomenal beers. So, uh, also, big fan right now of. Um, uh, I've always been a big fan. I, nobody can try them because they're so local, but Belgian Underground is always Belgian been Underground one of my fantastic. favorites. Belgian Underground is fantastic. I'm a big fan of what Dan's doing with Ratchet Brewing. Yeah. They have their grand opening this yes. Saturday. Yes. I'm going to be there. So Excellent. At 3 p.m., I think. But, uh, um, yeah. Those are some pretty small brewers, though. Yeah. Don't, don't worry. Not Google Mesh. <laughs> um, yeah. Great Notion's always solid. Um, let's see. Uh, good. Dan Kasi, honestly, solid for... Uh, a, a large national brewery yeah. uh, there down in Eugene. You know, and whenever I'm abroad, I see Rogue everywhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rogue, Rogue absolutely is yeah. one of my favorites. Yeah. No, we're, um, we're, we're not hurting for craft beers over here. So. No. Like um, I said, it's it's kind of our, oh, Degard, for, completely forgot oh, about yeah, Degard. Degard. Cold Fire. Oh, dude, yeah, DeGarde makes, like, yeah. uh, John can tell you. Uh, <laughs> oh, Fort a, George, for crying out loud. Fort George is great. I think DeGarde, is it their vice beer, or do they have, like, a Gosa that's, like, it's legit? I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure it's, like, a vice beer. I don't know. John might know. Yeah. DeGarde's yeah, got a lot of ten, solid so, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Parched 10 Barrel. 10 Barrel is solid. Uh, yeah. I never really had a bad beer from them. Yeah, and then it, if it's, like, you look at any brewery in Bend, really, like, Sun yeah. River is solid, Crux is Deschutes. solid. Block 15 is okay. Uh, Deschutes is good. Yeah. Um, how about a brewery we hate? Yeah. A brewery we hate. Gilgamesh? Okay, besides Gilgamesh. Yeah, I got, that one's easy. Um, Rhett is abroad. Because I like... Because why? Because <laughs> I like Breakside? Um, yeah, worst brewery? It's, it's hard to say. Um... Seven Brides would have been up there for me. I know they're yeah. another small one, but man, yeah. their like beer was just always so just like Gilgamesh. It's like every batch was different. It was weird, yeah. right? It was it was so inconsistent. Like sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad, but it's never the same beer twice. Yeah, exactly. Dan told me that their glycol system was like broken when he took yeah. over their thing. Like it just yeah. wasn't right. Yeah, which yeah. I don't know what impact that has on it beer. Was, but yeah, uh, maybe John can chime in. Crux the chat. is great. Freem is great. Hop valet, uh, <laughs> you dummy! <laughs> Hop valet, <laughs> you're so you're so stupid. John is so stupid. Hop valet, <laughs> are you uh, done? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that, I had way too much fun with that. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, so there's a little bit of Ryzen four thousand series news, um, and uh, it's actually kind of interesting. Um, we're, we're talking about not the current generation of Ryzen CPUs, but Ryzen fourth generation or third gen or whatever the hell they'll call this one. Uh, whatever the 4,000 series GPUs are. Um, there's some leaks on some new APUs with Vega 12 and Vega 15 on board. Um, so this is actually pretty big news because, uh, the Vega 8 and Vega 11 on their current integrated GPUs are decent enough. They're, they're GT 1030-ish level of power. Um, but for quite a long time, we've been lacking that sub 100 watt gaming power powerhouse. You know, the consoles have are built on AP. Gosh, the hiccups are in full force tonight. Um, <laughs> you want me to scare you? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. Next week we'll be drinking Gilgamesh. <laughs> I was trying to think of something like that. I'm so slow though tonight. I just couldn't think of anything that stuff. Uh, so Vega 12, Vega 15. Uh, for a long time, the the consoles have been running off of APU based systems. They they've been low power eight core systems with with AMD APU based graphics on board, and to some pretty good effect. Um, you know, GT 1050 level or GTX 1050 level power. Um, 
And we've been kind of missing that on the PC side where there's no all-in-one low power system. You have to buy a, a 65 watt TDP chip and then throw in a 75 watt graphics card on top of it to get the same kind of effect. And so this supposed APU, uh, which has been leaked, uh, which is a Ryzen 9 based APU, um, has been referenced with seven nanometer process um, and up to Vega 15 graphics. Um, and that is very much in contrast to the current APUs, which are still on the 12 nanometer process. They're on the Zen Plus based process. Um, so there's not a lot of information beyond that, but kind of exciting times uh, if you're like a home theater fan or a low cost, low power gaming system fan. Uh, this could totally introduce us to GTX 1050 or 1050 Ti levels of power in a 65 watt chip with four, six or eight cores on it, uh, which I would be absolutely all for. I mean, we're, we're talking about, you know, potentially building an entire gaming PC for like 250 bucks brand new retail. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping this, this is actually a true rumor, uh, rumored release at CES. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be shocked because the previous gen APUs launched at CES. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, um, the, 2000 series APUs, the 2200G and 2400G, those officially launched at CES in 2018. Mm. So I wouldn't be shocked to see these these APUs launched in, launch in uh, in 2020. And it's right around the corner. Mm -hmm. We'll be there. Some of us. Well, will I will be. be. Rhett's got other bigger plans. Other bigger plans. Yes. I, I gave Rhett a pass because Rhett seriously does have some bigger things going on. <laughs> <laughs> Poor planning on my part, I should mm -hmm. have. Should have adjusted my timeline by a month. Yep. Either direction. <laughs> a month earlier, get that sweet tax break. A month later, get to go to CES. That's you know right. I mean? Come on. That's right. <laughs> Just couldn't keep it in your pants and ruined everything for everyone. Well, you know. <laughs> you gotta go. <laughs> That's horrible. That's horrible. Uh, but congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, let's skip this one. Um, yeah, it looked really one. stupid anyway. Yeah. I mean, nobody cares about their own personal data. Uh, we'll, we'll, co we'll come back to it if we can. <laughs> no, no, but I, I want to get into the next one, because yeah, the next one... Very uh, near and dear to our hearts. Yes, very very much a, a uh, critical story in, in Rhett's line of work, something that I've had to deal with occasionally. Um, and that is penetration testing. So... Uh, actually, last time you were on the show, we talked about this very story. Yeah, I was kind of excited that uh, it popped back up today. Right, so. I, I kind of was too. I went, oh, Rhett's back on. we got to talk about this again. Uh, so this story is back from September 11th and uh, uh, of this year when a couple of men were arrested in Iowa for breaking into an Iowa state courthouse. Um, however, the story doesn't stop there. These men were employed with coal fire out of Colorado, which is a penetration testing firm. Uh, which was contracted by the state of Iowa to penetration test three separate courthouses in, inside of Iowa. Um, the men broke in sometime around midnight, uh, were on the third floor of one of the courthouses in one of the judge's chambers yeah. uh, when an alarm went off and a patrol car responded. The men initially <coughs> uh, concealed themselves. They did hide. Uh, they then announced their presence to the officers who were responding and then walked down the, the, the hall or the, the steps with their, their hands raised. Um, they uh, then said, we have a contract in my back pocket. Uh, very like Django Unchained style. You know, if, if you will allow me to address the courts, I have a contract <laughs> in my back pocket for the penetration test of this current facility we are in now. That was a pretty good Christoph Waltz impression. Thank you. That was actually like not bad. Yeah, it, it's it's more about the timing and less about the, the yeah, tone. Yeah, it really is a more rhythmic. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, anyway, uh, so they they gave the officers the contract in question, and the officers were satisfied at the time. However, the county sheriff showed up, and he had different things to say. Uh, he said that regardless of the contract, you are in violation of my county's laws. And you are under arrest. And so the two men were arrested. Uh, not only were they arrested, they were held on $100,000 bond. Uh, and there was some 
some information and some also misinformation going around around the time that we talked about this. Yeah. Because at the time we talked about this, we didn't have the exact contract they were working under uh, to to explain whether or not their actions were justified. Was physical penetration after hours within the scope of work and the and the rules of engagement for the current contract? Uh, were were they allowed to break open doors or was it simply a you can walk into open doors? Was it IT infrastructure only or was it physical infrastructure? These are all questions that happen during a penetration test pre-op uh, in which they go over the, you know, what you can do, what you can't do, what days you can work on, what days you can't work on. And, uh, you know, kind of lay out what the plan will be. Um so yeah uh thank you for highlighting that section uh so according to the ars technica article they were allowed to do physical social engineering to attempt to gain access to the courthouse system the attempts could include attempting staff contractors or other individuals impersonating right imper sorry what did i say Attempting. <laughs> Impersonating staff contractors or other individuals, providing false pretenses to gain physical access to facilities, tailgating employees, which is, you know, someone buzzes the door and you walk in right behind them, uh, accessing restricted areas of the facility. The letter also said the tasks should not be performed include uh, alarm subversion, force open doors, or accessing environments that require personal protective equipment. Um, however, a couple of those are kind of... Iffy. Iffy. Open to interpretation in some way. Correct. Yeah. So the uh, uh, that was the social engineering authorization on page one of the document in question, and that's the one that Ars Technica really focused in on, and that's what the entire article is about. Yeah. However, I obtained a copy of the actual full photocopy version yeah. of the rules of engagement. So I read through this whole thing just to see. I did too. There's some interesting points. Yeah. There's some interesting notes in here. I don't know if you if you caught them all. I'll, I'll be interested to hear what you think. But let's go through them. Okay. So page one is the table of contents. Da 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 da. Uh, we get down to the scope of testing on page four, um, and they are doing IT based testing uh, up to 200 IP address on the external network up to. Uh, uh, moving on to the internal network, and if they don't break into the internal network within a week through social engineering activities, we'll assume a breach was made and they're allowed physical access to the network. Uh, application penetration testing for internal applications, and they had these detailed down below later on. They also said you can engage in social engineering activities such as spear phishing, uh, pre pretext phone calling, and uh, physical security assessment. Physical security assessment is the interesting one because that implies a penetration test from, from my interpretation of this contract. Right. Attempt to gain physical documentation at these three locations. That is, break into these three locations. Polk County Courthouse, Judicial uh, Branch Building, and the Dallas County Courthouse. Uh, now this line might get them burned. Can be during the day and evening. But so what's there's, more is their, their contract does specify eventually down in the bottom, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. It does specify 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. this is the one where it's like... But they are allowed to break into these facilities. Yeah. And, and so there's a little bit of he said, she said within yeah. the contract itself. Yeah. And all of this is going to be vetted by, by lawyers and argued in court yeah. as far as what the actual stipulations of this contract are. And and might might prove one way or the other whether the, uh, these guys were allowed to be here. But uh, the, the fact that it says attempt to gain physical documentation at these three locations tells me they're allowed to break into these three locations. Yeah, absolutely. And is the 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. only for the social engineering aspect of this? Or are, are we outside of the scope of work if we're trying to break in at midnight? Right. Because that's physical. That's a different, that's a different thing. I almost feel like it was just an oversight on the contract. You know? there's, a, there's an interesting page. Scroll down to page 12. Okay. And I remembered this one. Okay. <laughs> So there's 9, 10, 11, and 12. 12. Okay. Uh, how many target locations? There's three target locations. Here's the addresses of them. Uh, does coal fire have permission to tailgate? That is attempt to gain physical access to your facilities following an employee into the building. Yes, you do. Does tailgate have permission to dumpster dive? That is search through garbage cans or dumpsters uh, of your of property for sensitive information. Yes, we do. Does coal fire have permission to access all areas inside the buildings? If not, please access where areas are limited. Uh-oh. Uh 
Uh, JB building three and three and four floors, oh. no access. Three and four are out out of scope. Period. Uh, may show proof of concept to access it. The next line: If the facility access is gained, does your facility have permission to attempt logical access to the network? Yes, it does. Next line: Does Coal Fire have permission to perform lock picking activities to attempt to gain access to locked areas? Yes. Easy. It's settled. Yes. That is... They're, they're specifically tasked to not break any doors to open them. Right. Lock picking. The, even, the method that they even described on how they did it... Is, is shimming. Yeah, that's lock picking. Right. That's a lock picking tactic. Right. Popping hinges, opening a lock, subverting a door, slipping lock. That's all within lock picking. Watch lock picking lawyer or deviant olum. And, uh, and you'll, you'll see... Lock picking goes beyond, you know, taking your picks and your wave rake out and, and trying to, to break into a door. Uh, it can be any number of methods to subvert security on a door, um, which they did have rights to do. Now, again, I am not a lawyer. No. This could be two separate scopes that they're talking about. They could be talking about social engineering from the hours of 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. and then physical access during other times. And there were blackout dates that well, they obviously, said. Obviously, yeah, you're not going to be able to social engineer many people after 6 p.m. Right. You know. Well, like, there's there's always the contract guards, which aren't on duty police officers. Which that's true. They there's, don't know who's supposed to be there. There's always office. taking the people out to the bars and getting them hammered like in the movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, this is an interesting one because there's conflicting information within the contract. There's conflicting information from the sheriff's department. There's conflicting information well, from Well, it's a pissing contest, Cold Fire. though. You read the whole story, and that's right. the thing. The, the the sheriff's deputies that showed up on site during the whole thing, they're like, oh, okay, cool, yeah, not a problem. And then the sheriff Leonard, or whatever his name is, decided to show up mm -hmm. and wanted a, 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 a dick measuring contest right. for lack of a better term right and and here's the problem with all this is the state the state of Iowa contract, contracted with coal fire um the the what is it the Dallas County Sheriff or the Polk County Sheriff I don't remember uh, whatever whatever county that they're in yeah. the county sheriff is claiming jurisdiction over the state buildings and saying the county was not let know Dallas so, County Dallas County so these operations were not sanctioned by Dallas County, even though it's a state-owned building. I'm claiming jurisdiction. You're going to prison. Well, and this is the problem. And I and I wonder if this is just the perfect example of this system being a little outdated. Mm -hmm. I'm going to admit right off the top that, uh, I mean, you all heard me talking about law enforcement before, but... But, uh, you know, the whole thing with sheriffs is that they are elected officials and mm -hmm. they are the king of law enforcement within their counties. Yes. Their word is law. They can dictate uh, lots more things than, uh, than other law enforcement agencies can. Um, but a part of that is the accountability of an election, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this guy's literally just upset that the state like didn't clue him in on something. Right. Like, that's what it reads. And so he's holding these guys' balls to the fire. Yeah. Right. And and that's exactly what this is. This is a, a giant dick measuring contest for the sheriff. And this seems to happen a lot with sheriffs. Yes. You read the stories and it's always, like, oh, well, I'm the sheriff. Like, the the, sheriff the county sheriff got his panties in a bunch. And, yeah. all, and all of a sudden he's holding two guys to the fire when it's like, dude, we had a contract. We, we had this talked about. You weren't in the conversation because it's not your building. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and it just should show you like any time a cop shows up and escalates the situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're clearly wrong. I, I mean, these guys were arrested, let's say, detained by police, law enforcement for the reason of um for the purpose of determining what reason they were there. Okay, so right. let's say you go ahead you put them in cuffs for a bit. You get their documentation, whatever it might be, and you, and you determine, okay, it sounds like you had a reason to be here. We're going to take your name and number and all your information just in case, like, this doesn't quite yeah. pan out. Don't leave town or something. I don't know. You know, I don't know. Yeah. There's so many different ways that you can handle it. And this guy rolls up. No, no, no. Put them in the back of the car. Let's waste taxpayer money by lodging them for however long, like, a couple weeks? How long? It, it, was, was, it, two, it was two days. Two it days. was two days. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, um, still though, you lodge him for two days and, uh, and then the whole bail system is just corrupt as all hell. So yes. you're charging these dudes a hundred K 50 K a piece to get out of jail for something that like they were just doing their jobs. Right. 
uh, it's just a gross, gross misstep of power. Yeah. There's so many other ways that you could have handled it and looked like a competent law enforcement officer. Yeah. I don't know. but in, Instead, it seems like someone hurt your feelings and you're making someone pay regardless and, of who that someone is. And that's is. what it is, you know? It totally seems like he showed up to the scene and had this idea and they're going, no, boss, this is good. And he, well, I'm the boss. You guys don't get to tell me what's good or not. Yep. We, and we've all had bosses that are like that. Yeah. You know? Yep. Uh, so... We all have. I don't know. Um, totally interesting to see uh, what else will come of this. Uh, it looks like it was set to go to trial in April. April. Yeah. So, um, hopefully there's a good outcome. Personally, I kind of side with the pen testers. Yeah. Um, whether or not there are some facts of the case that have yet to come to light. Um, you know, I, I reserve the right to change my opinion as the facts are come to light. But uh, at the moment, it totally sounds like law enforcement dropped the ball and they're making people pay for doing their jobs. Uh, Becky says, dinner conversation tonight includes AMD versus Intel and some of Kraft Computing's thoughts on it. Then I notice he's wearing an Intel shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Let's you know I'm not a shill. <laughs> uh. Yeah, they might enjoy the debacle, nice Bryce, but yeah, that's not. Someone the point. says the governor should step in on this. Uh, Skull also brings up that Dallas County Sheriff, and inter interestingly enough, it would be the district attorney who's holding up the charges going to court uh, for the uh, arrest warrant by the sheriff. So, yeah, the DA is holding them to the fire as well probably because the da goes well whatever the sheriff says because yeah, sure there's politics in there involved yeah. in there yeah i mean they're both elected officials so um yeah what are you gonna translate that yeah probably says tongue punch my fart oh you have a drink today. How much is the Optane shirt? Uh, I actually got the Optane shirt uh, at CES, I think two years ago, uh, when Intel was first introducing Optane. Uh, I met with uh, one of the Intel reps, uh, discussed Optane with him, and uh, he gave me a couple shirts. So This is actually one of my favorite shirts. Cool. It so looks comfortable. Fits well. It's very comfortable. It looks very comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, it, I mean, usually the shirts that you get at, at some of these events, they're like whatever cheap screen printing you can get. This is actually like one of the Nike dry fit shirts. Yeah. Like it's a super nice shirt. Yeah, the dry fit are comfortable. Yeah. And Intel just had boxes and boxes of them there. They go, like, here, take a take shirt. Here, take two. Okay. Nice. Well done, Intel. Yeah. Um, okay. So, this next story, if we're ready for it. Yeah, I think we're ready for this next one. So we're rolling a little bit out of tech here, but... Yep. My conspiracy theory cap's going on, and I know that it's not original at all, but... Sonic the Hedgehog's movie look is fixed following fan outcry. That's right. So he finally looks the way we all thought he should have looked in the first place, instead of, like... A man in a suit, CGI suit. Like the the monkey kid from Jumanji. Yeah, it kind of does. Yeah. A little bit. And, and now he looks genuinely kind of like Sonic. Uh, a little bit stylized, a little, little different, but, you know, still genuinely Sonic. Yeah. Uh, conspiracy theory. Go. Because you have the same one I do. <laughs> My conspiracy theory is that he looked like this the whole time. <laughs> that they had this going and that the other Sonic was... It literally, they created a trailer using them to generate, you know, media buzz. That's yeah. my theory. Was it the same as yours? Uh, my theory was media buzz. Yeah. My theory was it was it was all media buzz. Yeah. It was how bad of a Sonic can we put out there? Because honestly, the movie looks like shite. Uh, yeah. Jim Carrey looks horrible as Robotnik in this movie. Does he? Um, I feel bad because Ben Schwartz voices voices Sonic. Yeah. And I, I have a lot of respect for that guy. He's yeah. a cool dude. But You can be a good actor in a lot of bad movies, though. Yeah, that's true. Um, we'll see. Um, yeah. I'm not going to see it in theaters. Yeah, it should be... I'm, I'm interested, kind of. And a lot of people on Reddit were going, well, now that they redesigned him, it looks like a totally good movie. I, <laughs> I want to see it. But why do that people think that way? The movie hasn't changed. Right. The movie <laughs> looked crap from the beginning. I'm just glad that Sonic doesn't look like absolute hell anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Joker is a big hit in Korea. That's good to hear. Yeah. Um, I heard it was a great movie. I haven't seen it. 
personally, I was a little afraid of getting shot in a movie theater, but, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, Jim Carrey looks horrible in general, yeah. yeah. Uh, the whole premise of the movie is weird. The... Um, <laughs> But but honestly, the 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 acting is overdone. The 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 dialogue in the trailer is one hundred percent cheese. It's you know what? Um, not that it's. I, I watched recently. I had my nephews over, and I watched uh, Detective Pikachu. Mm-hmm. Great movie. Mm-hmm. Fun. Mm-hmm. And I see the animation style in Detective Pikachu, and I'm like, well, Sonic kind of looks like that. Like, maybe it could be fun. And What good thing has Sonic done since 1997? Sonic Spinball. <laughs> Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, which is probably the best. I'll Sonic. give you a half. That's the best Sonic game. I'll, I'll give you a half for the combination of Sonic Spinball and, and Adventure 2 Battle. <laughs> you get 1.5. Dude, come on. And then you got the Chow Kung Fu and the Chow Racing. It's basically no. <laughs> like Chocobo's 2.0 from... No. <laughs> uh, okay, and then beyond that... Um, great soundtrack from 1997. <laughs> Yeah, I like the soundtrack. Like, Sonic and Knuckles was their last great game. I know Mr. Chiptune over here is going nuts, but... You know. yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's my point, is... It's been 22 years. Is Sonic really still no. what you get up and go to theaters to see? Like, like Pikachu, sure. Yeah, and I mean, live that's because Pokemon. that's because Pokemon, when you break it down, is mm-hmm. like the, it is like the number one selling like, I, what's the word like not media franchise but like well franchise in general. Uh, you're talking like toys. You're talking right. games. You're talking mm-hmm. all this stuff. Like Pokemon is the number one. I, right. Um. So it makes sense that he got like a blockbuster movie with like Ryan Re- Ryan Reynolds in it. You know. Right. And it was like it was enjoyable. I watched it. Yeah. And I was entertained, and like it was cheesy, but it was mm-hmm. funny. It was age appropriate. Yeah. Um. It was. I don't know. I, I kind of want to see the Detective Pikachu Deadpool crossover. Dude, I was thinking that the whole time. Yeah. And in fact, I'm pretty sure they might have made like a couple Deadpool. I'm jokes sure in they there. did. Um. They got uh, in the beginning. They got the actor who plays Dupinder in uh-huh. it, and I was like, oh, something's gotta happen. <laughs> um. I, I I was waiting for Pikachu to make a little hands reference. Oh, that would have been great. <laughs> oh my god, dude. The freaking voice acting was so spot on. It was yeah. so funny. Um, anyway, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, I recommend it. I, I ended up... It, it was on Amazon Prime for to rent for like a few bucks, but I had to rent it on uh, mm-hmm. the Sony store, PlayStation store. <laughs> yeah, the Sonic erotic fan fiction has been pretty good lately, actually. <sighs> I follow an, uh, I follow an AI bot on Twitter that makes erotic fan fiction <laughs> tweets, <laughs> and there is an absurd amount of Sonic in that bot's tweets. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna take your word on that one. Anyway, um, in theaters, uh, mm-hmm. what's February 14th? Mm-hmm. Um, Oregon's birthday. So. Yep, that's right. Also, Arizona's birthday. I think. Well, no one cares about them. No. Admitted to the Union in 1912, Arizona was. Babies. Can you even qualify them as a state? No. No. (laughs) Barely. Uh Uh-oh, who's O-Redding? Why are you O-Redding me? What did I do? Anyway. Uh, I don't know. (laughs) Um, Oh, probably about the erotica. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. On to Disney Plus news. Uh, yeah, so there's been another edit to the original trilogy. Were you aware of this one? I saw it all over uh, Twitter and everything today. Yeah, I, I was unaware of it until, like, early this morning. I didn't want, like... someone clued me into it. I was one of the few Star Wars nerds that, like, didn't hop on Disney Well, I guess Plus it just and... went live yesterday. Disney Plus did. Yeah, I, I was already yeah. subscribed. So... Uh, one of the most infamously debated scenes in history. And I say debated when really there's only one answer, and that's Han shot first, because yeah. that's originally how it goes, and that fits his character, and da-da-da-da-da. Um, 
has been edited again. And apparently it was for a 4K edit that was never released and is the last of George Lucas's fingerprints on the trilogy. Yeah. Um, so, scene. We're in Mos Eisley Cantina. Han and Greedo are having their little back and forth. And, uh, and you know, you know, uh, you know, most people don't drop their freight at the first sign of an Imperial cruiser. And even I get boarded sometimes, Greedo. And, and, uh, and you know, I'll, I'll be taking that ship of yours and over my dead body. And yeah, that's the idea. And uh, he goes, I've been waiting to do this a long time. So, yeah, I bet you have. And then Solo shoots him, right? Yeah. That's how we know the scene. I bet you have. I bet you, yeah, I bet you have. Um, and then Solo shoots him. And that's how we know it. Well, then there was the edit in which Greedo shoots a shot first over Solo's head. And Solo pulls the trigger and shoots him under the table. Um, how Greedo got his gun from here to here and missed him at like two feet away, I don't know. But he managed to do oh, it. Oh, because he was already shot. Right. Because <laughs> he was already shot. So it was a, <laughs> yeah, it was a post-rigger uh, uh, discharge of his firearm. Um, but now there's a third edit to this scene in which, uh, Greedo right before, or right after that exchange, he goes, yeah, I bet you have. And Greedo goes, McClunky. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> what? And there's no <laughs> subtitle for it. No. It's just McClunky. And that's it. And then both blaster bolts go off and Greedo's shot and then, sorry about the mess, and, and, and end scene. It's like... McClunky? Yeah. I I don't even know. Now, have you seen the fan edits? So that Twitter post right there. Yeah, I saw a lot of fan edits. Oh, it's good. So there's a fan edit going around right now where anyone who dies before they die, they they yell McClunky. McClunky. (laughs) And so it's got uh, uh, Greedo yelling McClunky. Um, they had uh, a voice actor come in and do uh, McClunky for Obi Wan when he's right as he's taken yeah. down by Darth Vader. <laughs> McClunky, <laughs> and, and, uh, and then they have Yoda passing away uh, on Dagobah, and, and Luke's looking at him. There is another Skywalker, McClunky. McClunky. <laughs> oh, and then it. it's just Luke going. He was trying to say Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> That's a pretty good one, Steve. <laughs> There is another Macaulay. Also, uh, we're going to go ahead and need a ban on Godzilla 2K26. Uh, he says Han is a hero. He can't shoot first. So let's just get him out of here. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Sorry, bro. Yeah, no. Remember, at this time, Han wasn't exactly a hero. He was a gun and mercenary for hire, uh, which happened to have handy smuggling ports for drugs and other illicit materials. Uh, ever smuggled people? Well, yes, I have. Those are totally conversations that got them to board Han's Millennium Falcon, which Han won in a poker match by cheating. Real hero. Actually, he didn't cheat. According to, uh... He totally did in Solo. No, he in Solo, he actually stopped Lando from cheating and beat him that way. No, oh, did he? Yeah, I don't think he used the thing, but Lando had that, the, like card thing oh that's right and that's he right. saw that lando beat him the first time with that thing yeah. so he shook his hand and he's like let's do a rematch and he took his cards away and like lando goes to like get the thing that's right <laughs> and it's not right. there and so han beats him fair and square yeah although in the books i'm pretty sure he cheated in yeah. the books like I'm, straight up against lando. yeah extended universe he cheated and that's yeah. what i'm gonna go with yeah but i'm fine with that yeah <laughs> i read all the books for a reason like it'd be no a hero way. shoots first according to lucas yeah just, uh... that's because there's no heroes son Ow! We getting philosophical in here. All around me. Up <laughs> um, yeah. So you're not on Disney Plus yet? Not yet. I have two daughters. I'm gonna get it. Just yeah. That's kind of why I just I, haven't done it yet. I jumped on the boat ahead of time. I was like, well, let's see if Dad can mm. enjoy this ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Um, plus, two it's... months ahead of time, you're already calling yourself Dad. I was trying to be funny. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so we decided to get it mostly because, um, well, it's like six bucks a month. Right. You have access to their entire catalog. Yeah. I do feel a little guilty uh, supporting Disney. But, um, 
so far it's been kind of worth it. Mm-hmm. I watched Mandalorian, which I was like super interested. In I've watching. heard that's really good. It was super entertaining. It was a little shorter than I expected. Like I, I think mm-hmm. they just did a typical forty minute episode. Yeah, I'm used to like coming off the like Game of Thrones wagon where you know episodes are like sixty minutes. Yeah. Um. And that was entertaining. And then, like, me and the wife watched some Disney original movies. Yeah. Uh, we watched Brink, if anybody remembers that one. Oh, that yeah. Oh, fun. yeah. Um, and so that's that was kind of fun. Just what, was, for... what was the surfer movie? Uh, Johnny Tsunami. Johnny Tsunami. Yeah, yeah. There was the, the Luck of the Irish, the basketball the one. The Luck of the Irish is really good. <laughs> yeah, man. It holds up. That's the weird thing is you watch those movies and, like, they kind of hold up. Yeah. You watch them and you're like, that's cheesy. There was... Uh, uh, Gosh, there, there was one that popped up today. It was uh, Xenon Girl of the 21st Century. I freaking love Xenon, yeah, dude. Right. Yeah, me and, uh, me and my wife My daughter's going to love ago. that one. Yeah, and the, what's fun is, like, they all hold up in their own way. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're cheesy. Yeah. But they're so, like, feel good. You can't even go wrong. It's yeah. not like, oh, my God, this is so cheesy and so bad. You're like, right. oh, my God, this is so cheesy. It's great. It's like 90 sitcom good. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, everybody's really upset about the beer joke from The Simpsons. Okay, guess what, guys? They're probably going to fix the cropping thing. They'll probably fix the cropping. Uh, it's day two. Yeah, I, I tweeted out about this, and I, I tweeted at Epos Vox, because uh, if there's if there's something that triggers myself as well as Epos Vox equally, it's uh, it's ratio mismatches yeah, on any yeah. kind of content. Oh, I don't, I don't blame anybody. And Disney's big enough that the mistake shouldn't have happened. Right. But it's like that one joke is the only joke people are talking about. It, that That's one that they're talking about. Yeah. Um, it, it it shouldn't have happened. I, I'm, I imagine Disney's going to correct it. Yeah, I, I would imagine so too because they're big. However, I do stand by it shouldn't have happened. Right. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'm enjoying it for six bucks a month. We'll see. Um, yeah. They got that Disney like Hulu package combined yeah i've got hulu as well For like so. nine bucks or something like that that's a great deal yeah so <sighs> and hey hulu has live sports yeah. hulu sponsor me <laughs> whatever i could i could use some dame lewd money that's true couple of money guns i have been watching the blades yeah. a lot this season yeah um I, yeah as soon as i think sports i'm like god enough with the football already but i've been like engaged in every blazers game <laughs> Yeah, um, I've had the updates going on my phone, and uh, it's been a upsetting season. But oh, look, the Raptors won. Yeah, of course they did. I mean, they're champs. They're allowed to win. Um, God, what are we four and eight now? Yeah, not good. I think we've lost like the last like five games straight. Well, no, we no, uh, that's right. We lost to the Kings yesterday. Yeah, we've had some close calls. Yeah, the Kings we actually got kind of got. Yeah. Really bad, but. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, so there's there Disney yeah. Plus. Uh, I guess uh, less than 24 hours after the launch of Disney Plus, Gargoyles, the animated series, was trending on Twitter. Nice. <laughs> yeah, you know uh, when my band, uh, The Monster Addict, that we talked about before, went mm-hmm. on tour, we would always watch episodes of Gargoyles. There you go. When we would uh, wherever we were spending the night, yeah. we'd watch Gargoyles. Yep. No, I've I've seen a lot of uh, people commenting on uh, on Disney movies and shows that they're they're going on. Uh, someone pulled up Darkwing Duck. Yeah, I've heard a lot of excitement about that. And yeah. granted, it's like it was one of the easier ones to find. Yeah. Um. So that was kind of cool. Um. I'm I'm excited to have all the episodes of The Simpsons in one place. Um. I'm excited uh, for all of the old like X Men animated. Yeah. stuff which yeah. is fun like my brother was diving into that and really enjoying it the old x-men uh tv series was phenomenal yeah i'm also excited to have access to all of clone wars all of rebels i haven't mm-hmm. seen any of rebels and i'm like the star i'm like the token yeah. star wars fan here yeah. um click on the link there oh which one? Uh, oh, that right. one yeah sorry i i posted the reddit link but whatever um you know, so and I, so I'm excited to have those things. I'm also excited to have all Star Wars in one place, mm-hmm. um, and I'm excited to have Marvel in one place. You yeah, know, it's like totally. uh, all that stuff. You know, everybody's been giving Marvel a tough time lately, but mm-hmm. and then all the classics. We were looking at like Rescuers and all that sort of oh, stuff yeah. that we're gonna line up watching. So. Yeah, so it's gonna be good. Yeah. I'm I'm excited. Worth worth the six bucks so far. One thing interesting about the Disney Plus subscription 
And yeah. uh, one thing that Disney is finally taking to task. I kind of, I'm down with this. I'm totally down with this. Uh, quote, Disney Plus warns users about older movies that have, quote, outdated cultural depictions, end quote. So Disney is airing unedited versions of all of their old 1930s and 40s films, which contain, we'll say, less than politically correct appropriations of uh, particularly African-American individuals. Yeah. Um, that means zippity doo has its original context intact. That means uh, Dumbo and the Crows. That means uh, Fantasia and Sunflower, the, the old uh, African-American uh, uh, centaur. Uh, yeah. So... That's wild. For, for one, props to Disney for acknowledging it. Yeah. That's a big one. And, yeah. and, and not just pretending it didn't exist. Because that's what they've done in the past. They, they've, uh, they've edited these sections out. They've edited the original movies. Um, and these movies were, were written in the, in the 30s and 40s. And, and at a time when you could make you know, blackface jokes and, and, and make fun of, of black people. and Not a cool thing. Not a cool thing at all. And uh, while some people might take offense to Disney airing the full versions, Disney's also acknowledging these were written at a time when it was okay. It's not okay now, and you might be offended if you watch it now, but we're going to air it in the unedited version. So I actually kind of give props to, to this one. Um, because in all of the, the descriptions, you can see a couple different Twitter posts here. Um, you know, quote, the cartoons you're about to see are products of their time. They may depict some, uh, some of the ethnic and racial prejudices that were commonplace in American society. These depictions were wrong then and we are, and are wrong today. While these cartoons do not represent today's society, they are being presented as they were originally created because to do otherwise would be the, uh, uh, that same as claiming these prejudices never existed End quote. So that's actually from WB. Yeah. So like Looney Tunes and all that did that. Right. What what Disney said is right at the bottom of that other one says this program is presented as originally created. It may contain outdated cultural depictions. Okay. Which I think is a step in the right direction. But yes. this person tweeting is saying Okay, it's it's showing how WB handled it yeah. versus how They said let, so this person tweeting is saying let's let's get real here. Disney did a lot of harm by just pretending this stuff never existed. Yes. And they said the only question is how do we address this and they have addressed it if the consensus yeah. from those directly harmed by Disney's actions is that we need stronger wording. You'll receive mm -hmm. no argument from me. Here's what WB says, and WB is very clearly, very strongly worded. Yes. So, so my the quote that I just gave was actually from WB. I should have picked up on the. the That's okay. The it was kind of. I would. I took me. A, yeah. Until you were halfway through to see it. So. Yeah. But uh, but yeah. So the Disney quote is it gives the the synopsis of the of the video itself, um, and at the end it contains the boilerplate language of contains tobacco depictions because that needs to go first apparently. And then the program is presented as, as originally created. It may contain outdated cultural depictions, in quote. Um, can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, about how apparently culturally insensitive I am. What, what's the what's the zippity doo da uh, significance? Uh, oh, I'm sorry for my... No. Uh, this is probably the best way to handle this. <laughs> right. No, zippity doo da was uh, basically like Song of the South, Song of the Slaves kind of gotcha, thing. Gotcha. Um, and yeah, it says something here. The controversial film Song of the South inspired the ride Splash Mountain and features the song Zippity Doo Da is entirely absent from the platform, presumably due to its critic due to criticism for its depiction of freed slaves. Yes. But um, I just wasn't sure what the song like because you mentioned that earlier. Yeah, basically Song of the South was depicting freed slaves as the stereotypical blackface gotcha. okay. African Americans and and uh the entire Br'er Rabbit Song of the South Zippity Doo Dah was kind of based around that whole interaction. Gotcha. So uh same thing with uh Fantasia, which I didn't realize growing up because I had the VHS copy of Fantasia, but uh apparently one of the the centaurs in Fantasia was right. a was a black slave girl right. who was putting flowers into the other centaurs uh tails and, and whatnot. And was scared away when uh, when Brockus spilled his wine and, right. and and ran away because she feared she'd probably be beaten because she caused him to embarrass himself. 
Right. And, and so there's, there's a lot of different things like that um, that uh, are just not not good jokes, not good references, not funny. But in 1935, you could get away with putting them in film because they were the accepted thing with white culture. Yep. So yeah, interesting. Well, <laughs> that one might not come out of the vault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Song of the South is ever going to come out of the vault. Probably not. Probably not. That's fine. Yeah. But uh, films like Dumbo, The Aristocrats, Lady and the Tramp, Jungle Book, uh, which were made nearly 80 years ago, offered the disclaimer. Yeah, I was a little blown away today. For, uh, here's a surprising fact. I did not know that Dumbo was made in the 40s. Mm-hmm. I have no idea. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. What a, like, yeah. I watched that movie a ton mm-hmm. as a kid. Had no idea. Yeah. That was from the 40s. There's also Peter Pan with the depictions of Native Americans. Yeah. Sure. Uh, that, that one's in there as well. So interesting with uh, the me smoke them and, and, oh, and yeah. that kind of yeah those things you watch as a kid and all of a sudden you're watching now and you're going ooh that's not right oh it's crazy how yeah. like then built in it like becomes it's right a, it's a perfect perfect way to sort of exemplify like how you become desensitized mm-hmm. to it you know I because I see people all the time they're like well, no that's not how it is and then they make very 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 benign mm-hmm. things that are actually like pretty insensitive it's like how did you get to this well, point where you think that that's okay right and it's it's right. because of that and right. you never think about it right they're showing kids this stuff totally <laughs> we all grew up on this so that yeah, makes sense <laughs> oh excuse me Bless you. I really hope I don't get in a bat like I did last night. I had like 30 of those in a row and it just wouldn't stop. You want me to scare you? Uh, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have Gilgamesh. But <laughs> <laughs> well. <Ooh. Hey>. <laughs> <laughs> Screw the hiccups. Now Jeff's got the sneezes. <laughs> Excuse me. This is going to be gross. Ah, <laughs> yeah. That sounds like nails on a chalkboard for me. Just like... Ah. All right. Anyway. So. So. That about does it for our news stories tonight. Yep. We made it with the help of our friends. That's you behind the camera. A little help, my friend. What a great song. Ah, That was a good show. Very good show. This is great. We got about five or ten minutes left. If you guys, if we didn't get to something that you guys wanted to talk about this week, uh, please let us know. Uh, we'd be happy to talk about that now. Yeah, let us know. We didn't even get to, to the uh, prismatic IPA, but that's okay. Yeah, it's all right. You know. Mm-hmm. I think we had this on the show a couple weeks ago too. We did last time I was here, yeah. actually. Yep, yeah. that's right. Could great beer. <laughs> great beer. <laughs> Very good beer. So this is winter ale. That is sitting so well with me. Oh, it's good. Yeah, I, I love those. Um, <laughs> I got a new ice maker. Uh, I, I've been trying to up my ice game for my uh, my home bar lately. Um, and uh, I got a clear ice cube maker that is just like an ice mold. Mm-hmm. But it makes the cubes crystal clear. Nice. And I'm really excited about that. It's kind of fun. Yep. Uh, Becky says, I know the chat's been quiet, but it was a good show. Well done, gentlemen. Thank you, Becky. Thanks, Becky, as always. Yeah. Hey, what's the graphics card behind you? This is the Asus ROG Strix RX 5700 custom card. Um, I actually just shot a video with this card, so I'm hoping to post that in the next day or two if I can get through the editing. Um... So for those who don't know, I have I haven't posted a video in like 45 days outside of a live show, and that's really, really weird. Um, I When we first moved out of our house, I went 30 days without posting. Trying to buy this house, there's been so much back and forth and, and other things that have come up. I, I just literally haven't had time to film a video. Um, I finally got one filmed this weekend, and it's a review of this graphics card right here. But I had to do it outside of the original context that I had originally planned on because I originally planned on putting this up against the 2060 Super. Since I did the original benchmarks, the 20, or sorry, against the 2060. 
since I did the original benchmarks, the 2060 Super has come on the market. So I don't have that card to test against, but I did put this up against a GTX 1080 and a, and a Vega 64. So kind of we're gonna see what the current 350 to $400 market brings versus the previous heavyweights, uh, both AMD and Nvidia and uh, just overall quality of the card. And I will say this is a solid looking RX 5700. I'm, I was really, really happy with the results. So stay tuned for that video, maybe dropping on Friday, Sweet. I hope. And then uh, I think I have one more before I have to pack everything up and move again. Exciting. <laughs> yeah, it has been, it's been a couple of months. Oh my God. Yeah. Is it just me or is there basically no excitement around Star Wars Fallen Order? Have you seen any of the trailers? That thing looks God awful. Not only that, but uh, the last Star Wars game that EA published uh, led to the most downvoted post in Reddit history. Yeah. Um, Don't you guys have phones? No, wait, that was the second place. Yeah, that was the other one. Nah. <laughs> those are those other guys. Human rights suck. Um, according yeah. to those guys. Right. Not me. No, um, <laughs> Star Wars Fallen Order, uh, they're saying all the right things, but they're saying it out of the side of their mouths. They're saying it's a single-player campaign that we put a lot of time into, but they showed the first 15 minutes of gameplay, and the gameplay looks atrocious. The gameplay looks like, um, what was that, the, uh, Force Unleashed. It looked like that generation of gameplay where it was very reminiscent of current day Tomb Raider games, yeah. where it's you walk a certain distance and you might shoot something, but then we're gonna play a cutscene out of a movie for you and that's the gameplay. Yeah. And then you're gonna walk to the next location and maybe and maybe cut something's head off. And then we're gonna pay, play you a two minute trailer and that's the gameplay. Yeah. And, and it, it looked so damn cookie cutter where it was more like watching a movie with terrible animation than it was playing a game with good gameplay. And and I don't see that changing between now and release. It looks like it's going to be a pretty good story, but I think it's going to be a terrible game. Yeah, um, I don't get excited about Star Wars games anymore yeah. um, because they decided to remove or make it difficult to license the game, uh, license the rights out to other people, mm -hmm. and... Uh, the people that have been making the game, you know, I really enjoyed Battlefront for a bit, uh, and then Battlefront 2 came out, and uh, the whole controversy that surrounded that, I was 100% against. Mm -hmm. And um, I just don't care. Like Jeff said, the game looked kind of mediocre, and pfft, there's so many other games I could play. Yeah. Uh, just yeah, just last week, I bought this, uh, this little little title called Disco Elysium. Oh, you, you got that. I got it. Nice. I, I've beaten it like three times. Nice. And it is one of my favorite games I've ever played. It's, I'm going to have to get that one. You should. Yeah. And uh, what's so fun is so I, I've played through it about three times now. And each playthrough. So I, I can't describe the game as anything other than like very concise. Yeah. The game is very concise and like economic and... All of these other things, which at first you're like, that doesn't make sense. That game shouldn't be fun. Mm -hmm. But it takes place in this like very confined area. Yeah. Each three times, I've had a completely different playthrough. Nice. And it's the game is so addicting and fun and weird. From and... a smaller developer, that's a really, really big point of praise. Yeah. Is that it's not just a single experience on like a six-hour game. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I wish I would have kept track of how long it take me it took me to beat it the first yeah. time. I'm pretty sure. The first time I beat it, it took at least 20 hours. Maybe upwards oh, that's of good. 30. Nice. Yeah. That's and, not bad at all. But I milked it. You know? Yeah. I was milking it. And then I would I would have milked it longer, but there came a certain point where the game sort of like really propelled where me Where you forward. go, I just have to go. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and yeah, one of the other playthroughs might have been a little shorter just because of the type of character that I was yeah. working on kind of bypassed a lot of the other tricky things mm -hmm. that I had. Um, but I freaking love the game. Uh, Steve's saying we played it at PAX, and uh, that's where we first laid eyes on it. We, mm -hmm. we were gushing over the art direction, which yes. is is honestly one of the most unique that I've ever seen for a game. That's a gorgeous game. Yeah. And uh, it holds up, man. In, uh, yeah, it was worth every penny. I bought it on, on good old games. Mm -hmm. um, 
worth every penny and i'm still playing it in fact i might go home tonight and turn it on i'm just like that addicted dude it's one of, and, and and the skill system and the stat system there's no you know it's an rpg top down isometric rpg type game but there's no like fighting as we understand it in those mm -hmm. types of games like all of the interactions are handled through like a dialogue window yeah and the s skill system the way that you level up is like one of the most unique that i've ever seen in a nice. game um there's, there's literally no way to explain it, so if you're interested, go check it out. It's called Disco Elysium. And uh, with games like that out, you're not going to miss Star Wars, like yeah. Fallen Order, whatever it's called. Right. So. Uh, Justin says, Dell 7610 VM gaming rig. Is there an update on this? Did you do anything else with it? I haven't had time to work on it yet. Um, I did finally get, uh, if you watched the last video, I did get uh, the... Uh, Tesla card converted, converted over to a grid K2, but I was having overheating issues. I have since fixed that. Um, and now I need to convert the other uh, uh, Tesla card into another grid K2. I've read that there's a max of two grid K2 cards that I can put into a VM server. So unfortunately I'm not gonna be able to do a six gaming rig. It's gonna be more of a, a four player gaming rig, but I think that matches the CPU hardware that I have a little bit better. Um, and I can also lower the amount of RAM that I have to put into the system. Um, there will be a, a, a gloriously epic conclusion to that video probably sometime in late January. I'd like to finish it before, but I don't know that I'm going to have time between now and moving and then doing a couple of videos that have kind of been on the back burner before that and then going to CES and then getting back from that. Uh, but I think late January, there will definitely be a conclusion to that video. I know that's two and a half months away. I, I'm sorry. It's, this is just the phase of my life that I'm in right now. It's it's been move, 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 and that's it. So, but uh, but we do appreciate y'all sticking with us. Yep. Do I have any experience with LGA thirty six forty seven? I don't have any first hand experience. Uh, most of the servers that we're working with uh, right now are still based on the uh, the twenty eleven v three. Um, uh, I have worked recently with uh, some of the new Epic servers, uh, some of the SP3 socket servers. Uh, those I've been very, very impressed with. We have a first generation Epic and a second generation Epic. Uh, we have a, uh, uh, four or five of those different, uh, different servers and test beds. Um, so I've been super impressed with the latest Epic servers. I, I haven't gotten to deal with the, the latest like Xeon Platinums or anything like that. Um, but uh, I'd love to get my hands on some eventually. Awesome. Yeah. Good morning from London. 6 a.m. Drinking coffee. Cheers. Good morning. We'll be drinking coffee here shortly. Uh, right about eight hours from now. I'll be, I'll be having coffee. <laughs> yeah, me too. <coughs> uh, Justin says, sweet. I uh, can't wait, bro. Thanks for... Uh, thank you. I want to do the same thing for me and my kids. It should be a pretty fun distributed system. I will actually end up running this system possibly for um, a couple of different use cases. One is putting a gaming PC in my living room that is noiseless, running a Raspberry Pi in my in my living room that I can run 1080p gameplay from. Um, the other option is Rhett is actually looking at possibly doing some video editing for me, allowing him to remote into my gaming server and run Premiere on one of those VMs without having to have a super high powered editing rig at his house. Uh, so he's possibly gonna be editing some 4K ProRes footage for me remotely. Uh, so if we get into that, that might be a video all in itself is what's the editing ex experience yeah. like for him uh, in Premiere running remote on the uh, 2200G rig that I built him not long ago. And I think that's probably, uh, sorry, advice for the grid K2. You can power it with only this, the eight pin connector if it can provide 150 watts. Yeah, and I, I did know that, um, and that's probably what I'm going to do, although that server does have uh, both two eight pins and two six pins. So I, I could, in theory, run two full power graphics cards and not have to, uh, to compromise on anything. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, have you tried the Crytek ray tracing benchmark? I have not yet, or something like a Chinese X99 for RET. No, actually, Hops and Bruises getting the Chinese X99. Stay tuned for that. That's a, another video that I filmed that just hasn't seen the light of day yet. Uh, I have two that are on the cutting room floor right now. <laughs> so uh, that's coming soon. Anyway, I think that's going to do it for episode 106 here on Talking Heads. 
Thank you very much, so much for joining. Make sure to like this video, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Make sure to check out Rhett's stuff. Uh, follow him at uh, Rhett is Awesome on Twitter, as well as at Game Devs Quest. And, and check out Game Devs Quest for an upcoming game jam, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. Coming up in December, we got a week-long game jam coming your way. So if you're ever interested in learning how to make games, come join us on our Discord server. Uh, you can find out more at Game Devs Quest or at GameDevsQuest.com. And uh, we've got the lowest barrier of entry. We've got people willing to uh, hold your hand a bit, teach you some things, and uh, get involved in making some games. Absolutely. One mechanic game jam. It's, uh, it's, a, excuse me. it's a lot of fun. Uh, so if you haven't checked that out, please do so. Uh, other than that, good stream, good show. Uh, Jeff, you're a giant tech tuber. You're buying a home. Uh, there's no need for you to apologize for the long time, long time in between posts. I feel there is because it's been 45 days, and and I I did hold myself to a standard of at least posting one video per week, and it's been five weeks. Um, but uh, we we are going to be hitting the ground running as soon as I am back and settled again. So uh, if you like the content, stay tuned. There's going to be a lot more of it coming very soon. As soon as these hiccups stop. <laughs> So anyway, thanks guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next week. Cheers. Cheers all.